The following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. This week on the Defy Life Podcast, the guys discuss the NFL draft, wide receivers, some NFL free agency, and the Deshaun Watson situation. And as always, they also has a listener question and wrap things up with a round of trivia. All that and more. Let's get to it. Yeah. That's what it is. I guess we gotta do it then. You all right? Two. Two. All right. Money. What's going on? Let's get it. Strap in, let's take a ride, oh yeah, it's about that time, right? Been waiting all week to get to this, it's finally time to define life, let's chop it up, keep it trail, no other way, that's what we do, we might disagree, but it's all love, guarantee we gon' speak the truth, yeah, this hit different, my guys with me, now who's with us, stick around for a few minutes, it's contagious, you'll get it, you downloaded the realest, don't fail us, we'll get out, you not rockin' with the five life, then what's your life about? Welcome back, welcome back to the Defy Light Podcast, powered by the Defy Light Podcast Network. This episode is sponsored by Bud Bottles, home of the Bud Bottle and the Bud Freshener. Please visit BudBottles.com for your odor eliminating needs. This is episode 190. Y'all come on in, wipe your feet, close the door behind you. I'm your host, J.R. Glenf. Joined as always by my wonderful co-host, my big cuz, Alvin Glenf. What's good with you, cuz? What's, What's the, the deal, deal? cuz? What's going on, man? So I good know. to be back. No doubt, we uh, we've been out for two weeks. We apologize for the for the wait. Uh, maybe y'all didn't miss us. Maybe it was a good thing y'all got rid of us for two weeks. But if you're here, you probably did because we missed y'all. Hopefully, so. hopefully they <laughs> missed us because you know it's it's, uh, it's definitely the highlights of our week. So hopefully we was missed and people recognize that we were uh, not posting and not. Um, publishing shows right um but we here we back and a lot to catch up on a lot been going on in the sports world so looking forward to this show absolutely man um you know good to be back with the good times roll there's a lot going on in the world of the nfl uh, between the draft season uh the draft approaching um you know the free agency just the first round of free agency just wrapping up and we got a lot of one of the bigger stars in the nfl uh houston texans quarterback deshaun watson has some some things going on <laughs> we'll say that for now. Uh, so y'all, uh, we're gonna be NFL heavy today. Um, the NBA ain't nothing going on, but LeBron's ankle injury, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's, that's big news because it never that's happens. Cool. That dude's never hurt. So, um, but so the ankle's a high ankle sprain. He'll be back soon. So nothing to worry about. MRI results were negative, so they just got to gear up for the playoffs. So. NBA. LeBron, LeBron is a beast when it comes to injury. So right. one of the uh, most um, incredible healers takes amazing care of his body. Right. So you know if they say for mere mortals, four weeks, you know right. he'll be back in two. He'll yeah, be back. exactly. And uh, with that being said, though, speaking of the Lakers and LA basketball in general, um, and legends, um, your, your uh, former legend. Um, Great and Clippers executive Elgin Baylor uh, passed yes. away at the age of 86 this week. So, um, you know, condolences to his family. Shout out to the man, the player that he was, uh, an amazing, amazing, one of the more underrated le- legends in the history of the game. True, sure, indeed. I think um, was uh, someone who played at a time when the NBA was not one of the largest um, entities in sports entertainment. Right. Um, played on a Laker team that. You know, when he was there, they were building, and he was sort of, at the end of his career, they made it to a championship. But, you know, when you think about him, uh, uh, Jerry West, and uh, Wilt being on the same team, you know, that's a big three before people even know what a big three was. And, um, you know, a lot of shout-outs to some of the big threes um, that we've seen since then, but that that definitely is one of the greatest uh, three 
players to play together on a team in the NBA history. So um, shout out to Elgin because not only was he a, a phenomenal player, underrated, but uh, was a GM for 22 years. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, to do anything for 22 years at the same place, you know, deserves a lot of credit. So even though they weren't the uh, successful franchise like the Clippers are now in terms of winning, um, I think he was a, a, a African-American GM before – you know, it was definitely of uh, more popular um, in terms of what's going on now. So right. shout out to him. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. and I think his, his legacy as a player kind of gets tarnished because of that Clippers um, connection to the Clippers during their mm-hmm. bad days. But mm-hmm. was, was he around the Clippers when uh, during the time when like they had like Darius Miles and Elton Brand, Elton Brand that group? He was. He was. Okay. He was the one. He was the GM. And I was so, I mean, for many people <laughs> – People associate uh, Elgin Baylor with the uh, NBA lottery because <laughs> <Right>. the Clippers <laughs> was on the lottery so right. much. Yeah, and the he was the faith of their franchise, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, no, 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 don't sit there. That's what Elgin says. That's what right. Elgin says. Back up off. You know he likes to sit by the right. corner. You know he likes to sit by the corner. So, right. Uh, you know. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a strong brother. Um, yeah, represented uh, the league um, and just um, definitely will be missed. Yeah, but and that was you know, one of the more more. And I say that because I asked that because that was one of the more. It, even though they didn't win big, they they won a lot for Clippers teams back then. But that was one of the more exciting teams to watch in my lifetime. Um, you know, like I said, Darius Miles, Lamar Odom, Elton Brand, um, Quentin, McGetty. Corey Maggette. Um, mm-hmm. was it Quentin? What's his last name? Richardson. Quentin Richardson. Mm-hmm. Oh man, um, that was man. That squad. That was a squad. Yeah. Young, Young talent. talent. I yeah. mean, Michael Oluwakandi. Yeah, right. Right. right, right. <laughs> Brent Barry. Talent with the the draft. You know, he was able to assemble some really good players. Just um, at a time they just couldn't put it together in right. terms of their youth. I think I think that was really a lot of their challenges. Mm-hmm. Is that it's just hard to win in the NBA with young players. Yeah, and especially young players straight out. Like, you look at young players who were mostly one and done and straight out of high school. Mm-hmm. Um, Lamar Odom was a one and done, so was Quentin Richardson. Uh, Darius Miles was straight out of high school. Um, you know, Elton Brand was the only one there that had some type of leadership skills, but mm-hmm. he was still young. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, shout out to, I don't want to get too far off path, but shout out to, to Elton I mean, to Elgin Baylor, man. He was a, He's a pioneer. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Well, yeah, man. Um, y'all, for those of you wondering, uh, Thomas Stevens will be joining us shortly. Uh, he's he's uh, a, he's trying out for a role in the, in the new Justice League movie, so we'll uh, pray for him. Uh, oh, for him. wow! Yeah. yeah. Well, it, they haven't is announced. He going it. For, is he going for the Aquaman role? Well, they haven't announced that there's going to be a new Justice League movie. Uh, uh-huh. He just went to go try out. <laughs> so, um, oh, they just have, in case, just, just in case there's a role for um, a black man with bad knees, they they found their guy. So, okay. We, um, okay. yeah. So, y'all pull for him. Um, he don't. Luck, he don't know. Who? Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he knows which role or which character he's uh, going for, but he'll figure that out when he gets there. So, um, okay. we'll talk to him shortly. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, man, like always, I want to give a shout out to our patrons before we get too deep, man. Y'all are uh, the reason we do this and the reason why we can do this in a lot of ways. So um, people always ask, what's the best way to support the network? Go to patreon.com forward slash go to five life and become a patron. Uh, you can help support our growth and allow us to host events and continue to work in our communities for less than your favorite fast food combo. You can support the five life. Uh, so go check out again it's patreon.com forward slash go defy life you can also check out our written content at go defy life.com the original uh and uh, you can also check out our podcast hub where all of our podcasts in the network are uh are held at defy and definitely check us out at defy gear.com for our branded apparel uh we're also in brick and mortar um locations at uh, cola kicks in columbia south carolina so uh, y'all definitely check us out. Uh, Al, did I did I get everything, brother? brother like, like a, a red, red man, man and method, method man doing mm. classically, classically dope. dope. Mm, I take it. 
I will take that. You like that? that? Yeah, I will take that. Like, as long as you didn't give me like like a classic vanilla ice and you know, nah, Soldier nah, Boy do that, and I'm good. No, nah, no, nah, I had to go <laughs> Red Man and Meth Man. Um, because it links into a little segue because I got some breaking news. Oh. And I'm not sure if it's breaking news because, you know, it might be already out there. It probably is, but it's breaking for our podcast because right. we ain't been on the air for a few weeks, right? So we're breaking news on our podcast. So word on the street, or maybe even be word on social media for all I know, Red and Meth are going to do a social media versus. That's going to be so dope. You like, like that, that, right? Mm-hmm. That's, That's going to be, like, like, off the man. chain. And guess what? Guess, guess when they're doing, doing it? it. <laughs> 420. 420, my Oh, 420. my God. I didn't even think about that. 420. Wow. 420. Of course they are. Yes. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be so dope. Yes, so stay tuned, man, because I'm looking forward to that. I was, uh, I heard today, and I was like, oh, I, I got to, I got to bring that up because yeah. I know we got a lot of uh, hip uh, hip hop listeners, um, and who who like that real that that real funky, uh, classic, dope stuff. And uh, I just wanted to give a shout out because those cats is going to uh, be bringing the heat. And for all of us who remember the the golden era, it's going to be um, definitely a good day on 420. So, um, yeah, looking forward to that. And like many people, when they do these verses, I'm I'm hoping that cats drop some new music. So, you know, we've been hearing a lot of uh, word about you know Red coming with a new Muddy Waters album or just some new material. So. Uh, you, know, you know, let's, let's just, just hope, hope that, that we, we get blessed with some dope, dope stuff that day and, um, you know, show these brothers some love. No doubt. So I'm going to put you on the spot um, really quickly. What, um, yes, Mr. Sir. Muddy Waters, yeah. what's your favorite Red Man album and what's your favorite Red Man track? Like any track that is his or that he was featured on? Oh, man. So I got, I am a huge red man fan Mm -hmm. so um it's hard to pick a track that i you know just one that i like and i'm not saying that because i'm on the spot but i really it's hard to pick one out of the five right but um i'll I'll pick one that just shows you how much i like red man so on uh, a on tupac's album Mm. all eyes on me yes um he does a song him meth um, I think it's got your mind made up, mm-hmm. and I love that. I love that verse on that joint right there. Um, I would say hit my favorite beat, um, like just I, I like the rock wild. Like that just mm-hmm. joint right here is just classic boom yeah. bap. Um, never get old. I can listen to that in the shower. Um, like that that rock wild joint just bangs in my head. And then, and when it comes on, on, your face always makes that balled up screwy, like, right? Like every time, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like that, that, yeah, that right there, the, the gas um, face, right? Gangster, right? Mm-hmm. But honestly, um, I easily kind of like how we did the Denzel movies that night and just went like fifty movies deep. Right. I could probably go fifty songs deep with Red because mm-hmm. I really am a huge. Uh, funk Dr. Spock fan and uh, just a uh, huge, huge fan. So, how about you? What's your favorites? Um, Money Waters, no doubt, is my favorite album. Oh, album. Yeah. I didn't do album. Um, yeah. Without a doubt, I'm going to go. So, you said Muddy Waters, and, and nothing wrong with shouting that out. And that probably is my favorite, but um, because I'm going to be different, I'm going to go with. Um, the first one. Um, and I think it's what the album is the name yeah. of. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna go with that you. one. Okay. Cause uh, that, that one, one is, is it was just I hadn't really heard a lot of this dude when I'm listening to the album, but my homeboys was uh, Will and Chris and them. They was into um, they had a, a apparel company then, so they were doing some work for. 
the the hit squad and, and death squad and all of them and he was really just kind of yo you got to hear this guy red man and mm-hmm. when the album came out i listened to it and really really blew my mind really okay. blew my mind yeah um that's why i, I say muddy waters because because kind of to me it was one you know favorite to me that has a lot to do with not only like music quality but when it happened in your life, what was going on. So it was my freshman year in college. Um, you know, a lot of that music, 1996, a lot of music, you know, 96, 97 that year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Red Man's album came out. Biggie's second album came out. Um, Outkast, AT Aliens. So it was so much music dropping that year. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it was like nonstop, like heavy rotation of just bangers in my dorm room. And mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and that's why, um, not only is that my favorite album, but the song that sticks out to me from that album is "Pick It Up, Pick It Up." So oh, yeah, <laughs> that, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, if you find a bag of weed on, on the, the floor, floor motherfucker, motherfucker, what the, what the fuck, fuck you gonna do? do? Pick it up, pick it up. So yeah, yes. so um, just wanted to yeah, pick your brain really. How quick. about favorite beat? Like any? Uh... Oh, favorite. Oh, the Rottweiler beat is my. Um, is I, I, I well, I'll go with that, but I, I know you, you you said it already, so I will. All right. Ooh, um, anything the Red Man's featured on any any track? Um, ooh, man, that's kind of. I'll go with How High. Oh man, another classic. <laughs> yeah, another yeah. classic. Mm. And and that's about that is that comes out like ninety four ninety five mm-hmm. and I gotta shout out my boy Will, um because what's so crazy is like around that time, as they're putting that song out before that song comes out, um, Wu Tang is like bubbling mm-hmm. right and I think Meth might have done a single album by then, and I'll never forget I'm chilling somewhere with my boy Will, and he just like and I don't know if he. You know, I'm gonna give him credit for this, but I, now looking back, I'm like, I wonder if he had some inside scoop. <laughs> we really was sitting there chilling, and he's like, "Yo, you know who would be dope together? Wow! Like just doing a duet, like yo, Method and Redman, yo." Wow. And I was like, "Yo, that would be dope, right?" Mm. And and coincidentally, over the years, like he's definitely a Wu Tang fan, and so mm. we would be like bussing verses together, and he would do the Meth verse, and I would do a Red verse, and it was just like. <laughs> Um, but then they come out and I'm looking at him like, dude, like you a genius. Right. How you, you know a this? Genius. Right. How you know this? <laughs> so, um, shout out That's to the boy up. Will. Um, That's but yeah, cause Will. definitely a, amazing. They kind of, kind of yin and yang just got a f- amazing mm-hmm. flow together. You cannot so. fake chemistry. Absolutely. That's what they Correct. say about us. About the That's guys. what they say about they us. Say about these Defy Life guys. <laughs> Um, so not the, not the slight meth, um, cause we don't want to do that. Um, what's your no, favorite meth about. joint? And you may, if, but see, it's weird. Like you can't do that with meth cause, well, I guess you could say your favorite meth or Wu-Tang album and your favorite song and beat with, with, with meth. Well, with meth, um, I'm definitely going to go with, in terms of albums, I think I will go with the Takao album. The first mm. album that he came yeah. out with was this um yeah i i really i really like that um that joint right there the whole album and then in terms of songs and it's again plenty of song but one that just immediately steps out is um release yourself mm. um, from the takao album mm-hmm. and um just real grimy gritty track and just dude is just a uh, um just how his flow on that is just 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 crazy, and um and then shout out to Meth and Red because I mean while we going back twenty years, you know please check their catalog because they oh, released yeah. stuff quite recently that is dope. You know, right? so I'm just going slap with the, the, the shit out you. Joint. Slap! Oh my God! Slap <laughs> the shit out you! Like. I feel bad singing that shit out loud. <laughs> Me too. But but real talk. But it's dope like, though. I, yo yo honestly, <laughs> but and here's another uh, I, shows you that maybe I'm, I'm not the uh, the best of adults. But that's that was one of my theme songs for 
uh, get my players hyped. Oh, word. here in the locker room. Like, nice. <laughs> yo, y- y'all not feeling me. Y'all don't understand how I want y'all to be playing right now. So just close your eyes. <laughs> Close your eyes, get in close, because I don't want your parents hearing me play this shit. <laughs> and listen to this right here. But this is the move. This is what I want y'all to do when y'all get back on this court. We're gonna go out there and slap the shit out of somebody. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, no. I know parents are cringing like, oh my god. Nah, you, you deserve every every coaching award and championship you've ever okay. won. So. Slap the shit out of somebody. Let's go. Let's go. Oh shit. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, I would have to go with if I if including everything methods a part of the triumph. The second Wu Tang album is my my favorite. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, the, the forever. I'm sorry, Wu Tang forever and the triumph song from that album. Yeah, um, his yeah. verse, like to me, that song and it, it, it captures everybody at their best from Wu-Tang. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And everybody was available. Like, the first album was dope to me, but Master Killer and wasn't available for a lot of it. He was in jail. Um, Cabadonna was locked up, so, you know, um, you know, we didn't really hear about Cabadonna until Ice Cream, and that was dope. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But right, so, right, right, like, right. you know, everybody was available on that, 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 that track, and they just went, like, no hook. And just let everybody go rip that shit to shreds. So, um, and the beat was like that. That it's just the perfect Wu Tang song to me. It is. I just bomb atomically. Right, and yes. the and the be- <laughs> like between that, like ooh, we got to talk about this because to me, I bomb atomically. That that first four bars uh-huh, is uh-huh. right up there, neck and neck with who the fuck is this? Page of me at five forty. Yes. Like the first four yes. bars to open yes. a song in history, like this off the top um, of my head. Um, yo, I'm with you. I'm I can just off the top of my head. I can't think of anything better. Than like without like digging deep into shit, but those first four bars from those two songs are like the ultimate openings for me. And having seen them perform it live, mm. um. M- I don't think I think ODB had passed by then, but the energy that they can produce on stage and in the crowd from that song mm. is bananas. And and it's it's one of them songs though, and this is why you can tell how this is what I love about hip hop that it's not a like a one of them punk rock high energy song like right. where you just like ah! but as you just start bumping and it just mm-hmm. like kind of. It builds, 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 right. builds, yeah. builds, builds, and right. builds, and builds, and builds. Yes, that joint right there. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, shout out to shout out to Meth and Red, man. Can't wait for that verse. Yes, yes. four twenty, four twenty. Yeah. yeah. Next, so next week we got to talk about. So remind me of this. Uh, we got to talk about um, our our favorite like people we've seen in person. What favorite concerts we've been to. Oh, oh yeah, we gotta talk. About yeah, that. we gotta so, talk about it. And you know, honestly, I, I look forward to that conversation because I think due to I can't just say COVID, but it's also part of an age thing. Right. Where I'm not out to live performances as much, mm-hmm. but I did go to I'm trying to think what was my last concert. Might have been Rock Him. Wow. Um, I went with my wife, uh, Chris, and Dawn Cooper. Shout out. Uh, our one eye shut couple, um, and we went out to see Rakim, and that concert was crazy. Mm-hmm. And so. just a reminder, like, oh yeah, this is what I love about hip hop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So yeah, we gotta talk about that. Okay, okay. So let's do that. Let's do that. Cool. All right. Um, nice segment though, even though we ain't planning it. Um, nah, that was, that was nah. a good combo. But we uh, we told you it was gonna be NFL heavy this week. There's a lot going on. So. Um, we want to get straight into, um, as, we, as you mentioned with that with the Triumph song, Build. We're going to build up to some big shit because right now we're going to talk about the draft like we've been talking about um, for the last few weeks. Um, so this week we're going to talk about wide receivers. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, the Jets and the, uh, did not have as big of a need at wide receiver than, than they did two weeks ago because of free agency. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so NFL draft, uh, who are your top five receivers in this class? So I'm going with um, I'm going with Jamar Chase as mm-hmm. my one. I'm going to go with um, Devontae Smith as my two. I'm going with um, um, Bateman out of Minnesota as my three. I'm going with Waddle as my four. And then number five, I'm going with Elijah Moore out of Ole Miss. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's my five. Okay. All right. And uh, Pooh's not here to give his five yet, so I'll uh, skip you, Pooh, and uh, and give my five. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Jamar Chase at one as well. Uh huh. Um, and I think most people are gonna have these two guys at their top. So um, Jamar Chase at one, and uh, Devontae Smith at two. Um, a lot of people may have them. Most people I've seen have Chase at one, um, uh-huh. but mm-hmm. you know I've seen some people have them uh, flipped. But uh, I just think you know Chase has more upside. He's more the, the size. Does the size scare you for Smith a little bit? Um, yes, yes and no. no. So no, I, I think, think um, it, it it is a okay. So if you are building wide receivers in today's NFL, he does not fit the mold of to the wide receiver that you would build in today's NFL. But I think we have seen, whether it's due to scheme or skill set, um, you know, particularly if you have the right quicks and can run routes and set people up effectively that you can get separation. I think you can be very successful in this league. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely think him demonstrating that he can get off the jam and be um, can be successful against a physical corner is going to be something he's going to have to prove in the NFL. Right, yeah. And, then, you know, it's those nuances, like you said, um, you know, setting people up, being able to create space and separation mm-hmm. um, that, that kind of – you know, separate, especially smaller guys like that, um, you know, separate the – there's a difference in being a Ted Ginn and a Deshaun Jackson. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's true. So, uh, but, yeah, so with that being said, I do go with those two first. Um, a close third, I go Jalen Waddell, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Smith's uh, Alabama teammate. Um, fourth, I'll go with uh, Kadarius Tony. Florida, mm. another uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. another blazer um, from Florida, and fifth, I'm gonna go with Rashad Bateman. Yeah, um, from Minnesota, he's a bigger guy, you know, compared mm-hmm. to the rest of these dudes. Um, but you know, six two, around two ten, two fifteen. Um, I like Elijah Moore a lot, um, but you know, I, just for the sake of having a different kind of receiver in this top five, I'm gonna put Bateman in five. I like Bateman a lot. Yeah. A lot. Um, and, um, and who's your – give me one guy that's overrated and one guy who's underrated from this class. So I'm going to go – and I'm going to go Waddle that's overrated. Mm-hmm. And I'm only saying that just because I, I see him for some at number one, number two, mm-hmm. um, in in – in terms of the people's mocks as where he's going. And I'm only saying that just because he was hurt. And it's just kind of until I see what he has, I think it's kind of hard to put him up there. Mm -hmm. Um, He did come back. I got to give him a lot of props to even playing in the last game um, because that showed a lot of heart. But you could tell he wasn't right Right. physically. Yeah. So um, until I see that he's right, I think it's kind of overrated to put him above a Chase, put him above a Devontae Smith, um, just and maybe even Bateman. I just think we just need to see it first. And if he's the same guy, then I think he deserves all of the props that he's getting. But I just need to see it first. Um, my underrated guy, and, you know, when a lot of times when it comes to this question, oftentimes – 
it is usually I'm going to pick a guy that I just happen to have watched as they play <laughs> Mm-hmm. Some of my favorite college football teams. So this guy just happens to be in the Big Twelve, Oklahoma State. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Wallace, Tylen Wallace, uh, Tylen Wallace, yeah. and um, I just think he is amazing. Speed has been productive in college football, and so I think when he gets into the league, is particularly if he can get a little time to. Um, just kind of learn and mature, just kind of get right in the right system. Um, not necessarily expected to be a number one immediately. I think he's going to turn out to be a top notch um, pro, kind of like Pittman in, uh, with the Colts. Uh, he was able to sit behind uh, uh, T.Y. Hilton for a year. Um, so I think if we can, if he can get that, or maybe even end up in the Steelers franchise organization because they do well. With, with wide receivers like that, so um, I, I think if he's in the right admin organization, yeah, I think he's going to be off the chain. Okay, yeah, that's another guy I like. Um, and, and you know, he's one of those guys who, you know, it's cliche, but he's not the biggest, not the fastest, and not the tallest, but he's you know he's good at mm-hmm. um, you know contest con- contested catches and you know battling for the ball when it's in the air. Like I like guys who. Feel like when the ball's in the air, it's mine. Like it ain't no, ain't no Correct. fight for it. That shit is mine. Right. So, whether you're a football like, offensive or defensive, when right. you got that mentality, and you will play. Right. Well, and, and and regardless of sport, whether it's basketball, football, whatever it is, when the ball's free, this shit is mine. So mm-hmm. I like guys like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I got I like your overrated um, guy in, in Waddle because I agree. You know, it's so tough to tell. Before a guy who's been injured that long, um, and when a guy the last time you saw him, he just didn't look right. Right. So, um, but so by my overrated guy, um, I'm gonna go um, with Sage Surratt from Wake Forest. Mm, okay. Um, he's I see a lot of people have him like in the top 100 prospects overall in their top 10. I like him as a player. It reminds me a lot of Juju. Um, you know, a bigger mm-hmm. guy who doesn't is not a burner, but doesn't, doesn't create a lot of separation. But he's physical. However, he's like he's a poor man's juju. Um, so he's about six two, six three, about two fifteen. So about about juju size. But you know, he, he he's a body catcher. So he lets the body the ball get into his body. He doesn't use his his, his arms. His, you know to to catch to pluck the ball out of the air um, as much as he should and. And something always bothers me when every, 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 every play that I watch on you, when you get an open field, you're getting chased down from behind. That's not a good look. That's not right. And so it's good <laughs> that you got there. Like, sometimes I want you to be able to, man, show me some football speed, man. Get away from that. So he's always getting run down from behind. And, you know, and guys are able to grab him around the legs from behind. So say Tourette's my, my overrated guy. I like him, but not that much. Um, my underrated guy is Dwayne Eskridge uh, from Western Michigan. Um, oh. Yeah, one, because, you know, same school as Antonio Brown, um, same size as Antonio Brown, about 5'10", 190, um, and the same kind of player, just shifty and, you know, getting him an open field, and, you know, he plays bigger than he really is. Um, so as much as we have you know can say about Antonio Brown from the last two years, Personally, um, you know, the dude is a beast as a receiver. Um, so, you know, Eskridge is, you know, he's a guy, again, who uh, can play, come, you know, come back, combative catches very well, um, has strong hands. Uh, you get him in the open field, and he's going to make, you know, he, he wake up out of bed making two people miss. So um, I, I like Dwayne Eskridge a lot. So And went to the senior bowl and put on a show. So I like Eskridge a lot. Okay, okay. I mean, coming out of Western Michigan, uh, I, I got a lot of confidence in your scouting, you know, because um, they, they've produced A.B., so I'm, right. I'm sure he, he getting some attention. Yeah, yeah. So it was good to see him produce against the bigger schools at, at Senior Bowl and practice, too. Um, guess who's joined us fresh off his uh, audition for the next uh, Justice League movie? Tom How'd Stevens. it go? How'd it go, man? Man, go ahead with that. What's going on, gentlemen? 
I, I, I heard you was trying out for the Aquaman role, but um, JR said it might not be an Aquaman role. No. And wasn't really sure what you was trying out for. So, how'd it go, bro? Nah, man. It's not my cup of tea. You know, I'm, you know, I'm about the dramas and, you know, I want to be uh, an FBI you gotta, agent. You got to start somewhere, <laughs> sir. Now you get picked. Now you're on Big Boy. The DC movie comics. True that. I'm, like, oh, I'm, I'm better than this. I'm a drama. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, why don't you use those drama skills to tell us who your top five wide receivers are, sir? <laughs> My top five wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Give me a second. Top five wide receivers. <laughs> top five wide receivers. Okay. okay. Unlike. Unlike, I guess unlike a lot of people because of, I guess the kid's size, the kid out of Alabama, Smith, Smith. Hmm. Um, unlike his size, I'm still gonna have to say he's two, um, <laughs> because I, because I can't forget what Jamar Chase. I, I just can't forget him. <clears throat> right. You know, he just left a lasting imprint, you know, in, in my mind, on my brain. So, of course, man, I'm going to go with Chase One. And I, I am going to go with, uh, what's the kid's name? Uh, you just said? Devontae Smith. Smith. Yeah. Smith. I'm going to go with Smith. Smith, too. I keep hearing a lot, a lot of steam coming up from uh, what Kadarius Tony. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I, that's all I see on our draft boards. Uh, mock draft is uh, Kadarius Tony, but I, I really don't know a lot about him. Boy, I can play. Oh, he's stud? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I really don't know a lot about him. Um, other than that, man, I, I really I really didn't know a lot of the, the Pettis kid. Pettis? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just saw that, that, that he had wheels. I really didn't do a lot on, on the wide receiver group because I really didn't I really didn't see us taking one, mm-hmm. you know, until, until, you know, they start talking about Tony and I still haven't done my homework on him. I just knew that, that Chase is the guy and, 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 and Smith, he's, you know, he's, he, he's emerging. Mm. He's emerging, you know, with, I, I wouldn't let the, I don't know if I'll let the weight scare me. Of course, if, if he's there for us, I'll definitely take him. So, um, that's about all I know, man. At the at, at the wide receiver position, man. Okay, yeah, and I mean, and we talk about, and well, regardless of his weight, speed, height, whatever it is, um, and whatever position, we quarterback in arm strength. Like we always say, situation matters. Um, and you end up in the right scheme with coaches who know how to, how to maximize your skill set and run a system that that suits you, versus uh, trying to you know pigeonhole you into their their scheme. Right. Um, situation matters. So, you mm-hmm. know, with all these guys we're talking about, you know, you know, Ted Ginn, you know, could have, you know, in the right system. And then we've seen he's been on different teams uh, in, in the right system, used right, used correctly. He flourishes. Yeah. Um, and Deshaun Jackson in the wrong system, he he, he suffers. So yeah. um, that, that mm-hmm. you know, that frame can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. But whatever you go, situation matters. Agreed. So, yeah, man. Um, okay. So, want to get into? Apu, do you have a? Do you? I know you ain't done a lot of homework. I ain't want to put you on the spot. But do you have an underrated and overrated wide receiver? Yeah. I guess the less of the two evils. I, I, I definitely, of course. Man, it, it, I would say Smith is. is is being underrated because, mm-hmm. of course, they're they're throwing a lot of guys over him because of his size. Right. But the only but the only thing he did was get out there and make plays, no matter who it was against. Right. Um. He ran away from guys. He was, you know, he made guys miss, and I, I don't think I ever seen him drop a pass. Right. And and part of this process too, we say it all the time is. And we're kind of guilty of it, I guess, too. We build these guys up just so we can tear them down later. Right. So right. he's kind of at that point where he's done so much right. We build him up, and then we're like, oh, ain't, ain't no more good shit to say about him. Now let's start pinpointing the negatives. 
Right. So that's right. where we are with him at this point. Okay. Well, okay. So I don't. So I. Okay. So I gave him for under. I kind of got two mm-hmm. under eight. Okay. Okay. I, I want to throw Amari Rogers. Yeah. Um, we got, I think he's going to be I an exceptional. Was you know. Yeah, yeah, slot guy. Um, he he uh, like Smith. He never drops a pass. He mm-hmm. never drops a pass. He's gonna be he's gonna be damn good in in special teams in the return game. So I, he just knows how to. He just knows where where to be. You know how to get there. He knows knows how to get open. And uh, two years off that ACL, I think he's gonna be ready to go. So I, I have th- those. I have those to- those two underrated. And I guess it's hard to underrate Smith because. He, yeah, he's going to go to a top 10, top 12. Uh, and a little bit of early trivia. Who is the father of Amari Rogers? Oh, uh, the kid, T. Martin. T. Martin, that's right. Yeah. right. Mm. Uh, well, former Steeler. Uh, but, yeah, go ahead with you, uh, with you, uh, if you have an, an overrated guy. I don't have an overrated guy because, like I said, I, I don't know a lot about right. a lot about the a lot about the class. So I, I, don't, I don't really have an overrated guy. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, uh, again, that's our, uh, our our discussion of receivers for the 2021 NBA and NFL draft. Um, next week we'll talk some tight ends. So we've talked quarterbacks, running backs, receivers. We'll talk tight ends next week. Um, we shouldn't take long. It's not a deep tight end class. We may do tight ends and offensive line next week. All right. Um. So. NFL free agency hit um, this week, well, like last week, and it was a bit different. Um, you know, everything, you can blame everything for COVID these days, um, but you can, you know, sometimes jokingly and sometimes realistically, uh, but you can really blame the decrease in the the NFL salary cap on COVID because, you know, there's a just a financial crisis across the world and the NFL mm-hmm. got hit as well. So um, with the salary cap only being at around 186 million on this year, um, you know, it hurt teams, it hurt players. Um, you see a lot of guys getting one year contracts so they can, um, you know, kind of play, get some prove it years. Um, so I don't know. It's, 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 it's a bit different than we've seen. Um, you know, in recent years, we're seeing used to guys coming out getting these big deals, and it's been few and far between. So, uh, what I want to do with y'all is play a little game. Um, I want to go good move, meh, or dookie juice. Where do you rate this signing? Okay. Uh, all right. Um, I ask each of each of you about a different move. Um, you know, from uh, from different teams. So, um, and I'm just going to go team by team, um, their biggest signing. Uh, first, we'll start with the Buffalo Bills. Al, you will get the Bills. Yep. Um, we'll go with uh, Emmanuel Sanders signing a one-year contract for with the Buffalo Bills. Uh, good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? I think that's a good move. Mm-hmm. Um, adding him to that core of receivers – and a team that's on the rise. He's played in cold weather before. Good move. Okay. Uh, I was I was gonna go with Pooh and go Mitchell Trubisky sign him with them, but yeah, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe the Bears let him go. Right. <laughs> really? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good move for a backup. <laughs> Yeah, it's not a bad move, but I mean, you know, that name will always bring out the worst in you, man. I ain't gonna do that. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh man, uh, the Miami Dolphins pool. Um, the Miami Dolphins um, signing uh, wide receiver again on these one-year deals. Will Fuller to a one-year deal worth ten point six million dollars, um, three years uh, in, in, in incentives. Uh, good move, man, or Dookie Juice. A good move. I mean, yeah. he's an absolute burner. Mm-hmm. If if as long as what's the tour can can get it to him, mm-hmm. he's definitely gonna stress the D. He's gonna he's gonna open up things for Parker on the other side. Not that he's a dynamic route runner, but he's just flat out speed, and you have to you have to protect the corner with a safety. All right. 
Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and another big deal for the Dolphins, who it wasn't a, it wasn't a signing; it was a trade. But the Dolphins and the Bills made a trade. Uh, Bernard McKinney, inside linebacker for Shaq Lawson, edge rusher. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, deal. So I want to throw that out there. Um, Pooh, I'll go with you again on this one because I'm saving the Jets for for Al. Um, right. The New England Patriots. Um, let's see what their biggest move was. They made a lot of deals. I, hey, I love everything they did. <laughs> right. Um, I love everything they did. That's what I was about to ask you. Is there anything they did that you didn't like? Because I'll just run through them. They re-signed Cam uh, to a one-year deal. Um, they got Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry at tight end, John o. Smith at tight end. So the Hunter Henry, John o. Smith kind of looks like they're trying to get back to the the Gronk and right. Hernandez days. Right. Um, they brought back Trent Brown at tackle. Like, it's crazy. Like they got uh, Devin uh, Gauthier, Noy, they brought back Van, Van Noy, Noy, Montrevious Adams, Henry Anderson, Matt Judon, Raquan McMillan, like they mm. Justin Bethel, Jalen Mills. They they brought back every they brought everybody in. Um, I don't I, love, I don't see a bad move in the bunch. No, I I love them all. I yeah. I just can't believe I didn't hear any more rumbling about other people. You know, attempting to get Van Noy. He 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 had a career year. He did. I think he wanted to go back. Yeah, of course. But yeah. I mean, you didn't hear anyone saying that they were going in. You know, all in on mm-hmm. him. I mean, he 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 was a monster. I don't even know why they cut him. I guess to what to to pay Will. I, I don't get it. I guess I don't know. Um, I don't know. And, and some guys like Van Noy, he had a great year. But some guys like are meant to be with certain franchises. He just got it. Just seems like he's meant to be a patriot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hear that. I get it. No, oh, no, no. Uh, Al, your New York Jets. Yes. Um, I guess your, your biggest signing will be wide receiver Corey Davis. Um, signing a three-year, thirty-seven point five million dollar deal. Uh, good move, man, or Doogie Juice? I'm gonna say. Yeah, mm-hmm. only because the it was a lot of guaranteed dough, right. and while they had it, so you know you got it, spend it. But um, I am hoping that he takes the next level and becomes that number one mm-hmm. wide receiver that we need, and then I'll go from yeah to good move, okay. but. I mean, I think worst case scenario is a yeah, but I'm hoping that um, he is that guy, and with whoever the quarterback is, he he uh, elevates to be a number one. Okay. All right, uh, Pooh, we're gonna move to the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens. Um, and they resigned, they resigned Tyus Bowser, the edge rusher, to be their their their, their lead pass rusher. Since they let Judon go and he signed with the Patriots. So Tyus Bowser staying there. But the one name that they brought in um, was Kevin Zeitler, former first round pick of the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Um, kind of become a journeyman at this point. Uh, he's been the Bengals, the Browns, now the Ravens, made the tour around in the AFC North. And he's been with the Giants. He's been with the Giants. Um, they, it's a three year deal for $22 million. Um, What do you think about this deal? Does it kind of put a band-aid on losing Marshall Yonder to retirement and possibly a trade of Orlando Brown. Yeah, it, it, it definitely does. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a solid, you know, he's a solid lineman. So he can, if they need him, he can get out there and go, or if they have to go with him until they, you know, draft or unless they come up with another deal. So, I mean, he, he's solid. I mean, he's not going to, you know, pro bowl, but mm-hmm. he's going to be able to do what you need to do. You know, you don't, you don't need, excellent protection for you know lamar and in, in your scheme but i do love bowser man he's a he's a he's a young kid so i mean i really lo- like Ju- love judon as well but bowser made a lot of plays and in and in, in, in spot duty mm-hmm. you know so it, it's time to take the shackles off and let him get out there and go yeah bowser's one of those guys and we, i'm gonna have a segment on this one probably next week too um is sometime soon because Bowser's one of those guys who I wanted. So, but you know, you get attached to a prospect 
And you right. just kind of convinced. By the time the draft comes, you're convinced that y'all going to get him, forgetting that it's a draft <laughs> coming up. <laughs> and uh, But it's, uh, he's one of those guys that I, I this is the segment I want to do, is who were you right and who were you wrong about? Uh, he's one of those guys that I can look back and say, damn, I was right about that dude. He's, he's right. really nice. Um, so, right. And then there's some dudes you're like, damn, I, I ain't telling nobody I liked him. I hope nobody right. listen to that episode. So, right. um, yeah. Um, Biles is one of those guys for me. And so, I mean, God, you know, unfortunately he is a Raven, but he, he's a damn good player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he is. Right. No doubt. Uh, Al, the Cincinnati mm-hmm. Bengals. Um, and I will go with two guys here since uh, they're going to kind of, they're going to, uh, new, new guys taking over in the backfield, defensive backfield. Uh, but one of them was kind of related to you and one's related mm-hmm. to me. Um, mm-hmm. Shadobi Awuzie and Mike Hilton, um, each signing three and four year deals respectively. Um, good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? So Awuzie, I'm going to go good move. Mm-hmm. I think he's a solid corner. Um, he's um, going to make the tackle, and I think he's going to fit in well in that division. In terms of the way they run the ball and just uh, being a physical player on, 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 in that division, Hilton, I've never been high on, so I'm going Dookie Juice. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Hilton to me kind of seems like a guy who's going to leave Pittsburgh, and you never hear of him again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Because they use him so well in that scheme. That I'm not sure if he's good enough in coverage, unless the Bengals find figure out how to use him exactly the way they did. So I'm with you on that. Uh, Pooh, uh, the Cleveland Browns. Um, so first off, I was talking to Keon the other day. Well, I texted him, and yo, it's a, it's amazing how quickly you can forget the dudes in the league, right? Um, the Browns, and this is not your pick, Pooh, but it's the name that's on their list. Um, Signed Tack McKinley to a one year deal. Y'all remember we talked about him before the draft from Keon? Yeah, yeah. Pass rusher. Yeah. I before forgot he was in the, right. And, you know, and we was trying to, me and Keon got into it because he liked him. I didn't. He thought I was hating on the Falcons. But anyway, um, it's amazing you forget the guys are in the league that quickly. Um, so apparently he was on. Um, he got traded last year and got cut already from a team he was traded to, was on somebody's practice squad, and now he's signed to a one-year deal in Cleveland. So it's funny how quickly things happen in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. fall fast. Right. Um, but the, the big signing for the uh, Cleveland Browns um, is safety John Johnson, um, a three-year deal with 33.7 million dollars uh john johnson from my uh, former ram safety who uh good move <laughs> meh, meh or dookie juice i like it as in i think it's gonna show up the run but you know they really didn't play him a lot in coverage mm-hmm. you know they had him up like in the box hybrid linebacker rushing the passer he did cover the slot a lot right but like so I really like the move for him. However, I don't know, you know, what that's going to do with their back half because they gave up a lot of big plays in the air, like over the top. So I don't know if if, if Johnson is that that player to protect you over the top because he was he was never played like that. Yeah. He always played around the line of scrimmage. Okay. Yeah. Um, we definitely gonna see because right. uh, you know with the quarterbacks in that division, they're gonna be tested in the air. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, especially uh, if, uh, if if Joe Burrow comes back fully healthy, which he should. So, uh, Al, the Pittsburgh Steelers, um, not a lot of moves going out and getting other people's players. I think their biggest move, of course, was being able to re-sign Juju Smith-Schuster, something nobody Huge. saw coming. Um, was that a good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? G- good move. Mm-hmm. The price, keeping him. Um, I'm, I'm high on Juju. Yeah. I, I think he um, gets the job done. Um, and uh, with, with a little flair, 
gets people to watch. Um, yeah, yeah, I like I like Juju, so I thought that was a good move. Yeah, I was hoping um, he would sneak to the Jets on the low level. <laughs> right. Um, you know, and Juju's one of those guys who's probably never going to be appreciated like he should, um, mm-hmm. just because he's not a you know again he's not a flashy player um, like on the field. Although he's one of the more popular players in the league, mm-hmm. but he's a tough mm-hmm. guy, and he's like, like a modern day Heinz Ward almost. Um, where people are always going to be looking for ways to replace him on the field, but you cannot replace what he brings. Like, he's one of those guys you want on your team. Yep. yep. So, um, I agree with you. It's a huge sign. Um, on to the AFC South, and we're going to talk about this team a lot in, in, in a few minutes. Um, the Houston Texans. Um, this, is, this is kind of difficult because I don't know, depending on what happens with their quarterback, um, some of these signings could be huge, but not knowing what's going to happen with the quarterback, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with um, they sign former de- former Dallas Cowboy defensive tackle Malik Collins to a one year deal. Um, Poo, um, is that uh, a uh, good move? Good move. Meh. Or Dookie Juice? Good move. Yep. Good move. Yeah, I like Collins. At least a good yeah. ball player. I, I don't know why we we stayed off of him, but I think he's better than Leno. I think he's better than what we have. Mm. Yeah, definitely a good player. Um, just outpriced himself with us in terms of mm. what we had to spend when he was getting his second contract. But I like Malik a lot. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, Al, the Indianapolis Colts. Um they didn't. The only outside move that they brought in, we'll go we'll count this, um, because they they only they re-signed Xavier Rhodes and Marlon Mack, but of course the big one is they traded for Carson Wentz. Um, you know they, they uh what the what was it a, a third and a second. Um, mm-hmm. a, the uh, the, it's good move, man, or Dookie Juice. Like well, I put it this way because. We saw we kind of we kind of biased on Carson Wentz. We've seen what yeah, he's done the last right. couple of years. <laughs> but I'll put it this way: Would you have traded the second and third for him, or would you have taken a chance and drafted a rookie? I think with the team they have, mm-hmm. it was worth taking a shot right. for Wentz. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, and I think that's why he's uh, yeah, instead of the Dookie Juice, because <laughs> I think for those of us of uh, from the what have you done for me lately, then he's straight up Dookie Juice, right? But I think when you think about where you are as a franchise and this particular move that they made, and the fact that they are linking him up with the coach that he's had proven success with before, I think is I think it's worth the gamble, and I would go with the meh and. You know, hope it's not Dookie Juice. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Uh, Pooh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they they got some pretty big signings too, but the biggest one I think is uh, cornerback Shaquille Griffin from the Seattle Seahawks uh, signing a three-year $44 million deal. That's a huge – that's big money. Um, mm-hmm. With 29 mil guaranteed, leaving his twin brother in uh, in Seattle. Who uh, his his twin brother? Um, what's his brother's name? Sha, was it Shaquille and? Shaquille and... Oh, what is his name? I forgot. I can't but, think of his name right yeah. now. But everybody knows him. The kid with one hand. Um, right. But he said he got physically ill and started throwing up at the thought of his brother signing with somewhere. Else. Mm. Uh, oh, so, mm. yeah, it's crazy. Uh, but Poop, yeah. uh, good move, meh, or Dookie Juice. No, I think it's a good move. I just, I mean, I'm just not understanding. I mean, mm-hmm. you have Jalen Ramsey, um, you have AJ Bouye. Um, I mean, do I think Griffin is better than those guys? I think you had Bouye at a cheaper price, or could I? I like the move, but I, I just, I'm just just not understanding what you know Jacksonville's got going on because that. It wasn't saving money at the time because they wasn't going out spending a bunch of money. So, like, I, I, I'm i just not understanding it. But, I mean, Gr- Griffin's a great move. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm with you. Like, I mean, Jacksonville just cleared house, like you said, two years ago. 
and mm-hmm. this is the these are the kind of moves they're bringing in now. So uh, we'll see. Um, of course, player for player, Jalen Ramsey's a better player than Shaq Griffin, mm-hmm. but maybe it's a different kind of player and different kind of person you want on your team. So we'll yeah. see. I can see that. I can yeah. see that. So I don't know. Um, Al, the Tennessee mm-hmm. Titans. Damn, you keep getting you keep getting these. Um, their big move was signing former Pittsburgh Steeler. Bud Dupree to a five-year, $85 million deal, 35 mil guaranteed. Whew. Um, <laughs> good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? Wow. So. Coming off again, an ACL injury. Yeah, yeah. That's a, so, it, it, meh. I'm going with him. Yeah. Okay. And because this is a where are you in your organization tight move yeah. and I think because where they are in the system they run that if you can get a dynamic edge rusher that could be the difference in them you know winning their division mm-hmm. and so you know that type of money you're looking at uh, you're hoping for two or three years of real productivity before you can move away from that deal Right. Um, so coming off of the injury you know, you hope he, it doesn't go bad, but this is high risk. Like, that is definitely a high risk contract, but I think it's also a high reward contract as well. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, like they've been trying to find that guy. You know, mm-hmm. they drafted Harold Landry a couple of years ago, but they've been trying to find that guy. They get, they, what was it, three, four years ago, they brought in Brian Arakpo. Um, then they brought in Jadavian yeah. Clowney last year. Now it's Bud so They keep trying to find that guy, and maybe Bud's, Bud's the man. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Pooh, um, on to the AFC West. Um, the Denver Broncos signed your former Chicago Bear, Kyle Fuller, after being released by the Bears to a one-year $9.5 million deal. Um, what, what do you think about Fuller and his uh, his deal with uh with the Broncos, good move, man, yeah, or Dookie Juice? A uh, great move, of no, course. Vic, Vic knows how to get the best out of him. Mm. Um, I think he's been maybe Pro Bowl the last two out of three years, or and that three would be years. Vic Fangio, Broncos defensive coordinator, not Michael Vic, y'all. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Right. Mike coaching. <laughs> right. right, my bad. My bad. And and I think Kyle's been all pro one of those years or so he's yeah. um two pro bowls he, on him, right? Yeah, he he's solid. And like mm-hmm. I said, Vic knows uh where he needs to be and how to put him. He's teaming him up with that animal Simmons. Mm-hmm. And uh and then uh I think they're gonna be very solid. So they I guess they traded they let Bouye go and sign Fuller because they let Bouye go, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I can see that. Okay. All right. Uh, Al, the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, mm-hmm. a year removed from being Super Bowl champions, um, signed offensive guard Joe Tooney from the New England Patriots uh, to an $80 million deal, 32.5 fully guaranteed. Good God. Um, for one of the better guards in the league, but I don't know if you pay that money to a guard. Uh, but – um, good move, man, or Dookie Juice? So it definitely surprised, definitely surprised me. Like just because, um, with you know they just front loaded, they just put a lot of money out of my home. So I'm like, yo, are they printing money in Kansas City now? What's going on? But you know, also coming off of the experience and the Super Bowl where your offensive line let you down. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, another, yeah, because while it's a lot of money for a guard, and that's a lot of money for a guard that you can draft guards, you know, like pay right. get a little cheaper. But, you know, how much is putting confidence and at ease your Apache Mahomes to say, mm-hmm. you know, we are investing in protecting you. Cause you are our franchise, so. But that's you know, what yeah, got me. They might have is... overpaid, but. 
Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what got me is the reason they got trashed in the Super Bowl is because of their tackles were missing. Um, the left tackle. Um, mm-hmm. What's his name? Nah. For Eric uh, Fisher. Uh, yeah. And their right tackle, Mitchell Schwartz. And the backups got killed and almost got Mahomes killed. And what do they do? They cut both of their tackles, the starting tackles, right after the Super Bowl. Mm. And sign this I don't I don't get it. That's a lot of money for a guard, but this is a good one. Um Pooh. The Las Vegas Raiders. Um I don't even know, man. Like, <laughs> what the Raiders do? Uh, <laughs> what did the, they do? Right. Their their biggest deal, I guess, they they signed Yannick and Gakwe, former Raven and Viking. Oh. Yeah. Um yeah, they did do that. And, ja- and Jaguar um, to a two-year deal. He's an edge rusher to a 26 mil. Uh, they signed him, and they also signed Kenyon Drake, a running back, yeah. um, to a to a two-year, $11 million deal. Pick one of those guys, man, because uh, either one of them, are well, they good signings, are they meh, or are they doogie juice? I mean, I, I think in Doc Wade – He's who he is, mm-hmm. and he's, I mean, the potential. Like, he's potential 15 sacks, you know. So, you put him out there, see can you get it out of him. Uh, they definitely want another pass rusher. I actually thought that's the guy that, well, I like Bud, but I'm just scared of Bud because of the ACL. Mm-hmm. But I thought I thought the, the Titans should have went after um uh, him. I, yeah, just because I'm just scared of Bud's knee. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because they're kind of on reverse pass. Like, Bud's sack total has increased every right. year over the last four years. And Gakwe hasn't had double-digit sacks, and they've actually decreased every year since they went to the AFC Championship against the Patriots. Okay. So, but again, there's the injury. So, do you look at a guy who's injured and on an uphill, you know, an upswing? Or you look right. at a guy who's not injured, but maybe he's flaming out. So, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. But I like Ngakwe, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, Al, the Los Angeles Chargers um, have signed tight end Jared Cook to a one-year deal. Uh, to replace Hunter Henry, who was, of course, in mm-hmm. New England, like all the free agents. Um, what do you think? <laughs> good move, yeah, or Doogie Joe? I'm going good move. Mm-hmm. I think uh, a tight end, a really good tight end, is a young quarterback's best friend. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think when you got a young quarterback that has shown a lot of potential, I think giving him a, a weapon that can get him first downs and um, kind of own the middle of the field and even the red zone, I think he's going to prove to be a, a quality uh, asset um, as they develop um, the quarterback. So I think it was a good one. Okay. Uh, Pooh. <laughs> the New York Giants uh, signed. Of course, their big move was – Wide receiver Kenny Galladay uh, to a four-year, $72 million deal, uh, $40, $40 million fully guaranteed. Wouldn't that be crazy if they gave him $40? Um, <laughs> $40. <laughs> Hometown discount. Right. Like, man, we'll give you like, Damn, he didn't million. read the contract. <laughs> right. We're going to give you $72 million, but for now, just hold his $40. Uh, <laughs> uh, good move, yeah, or Dookie Juice? Good move. Um, he's... I mean, he's going to walk in there and be the guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know he's a stud. He was banged up last year. Yeah. Um, but when he's, he's on the field, he's a stud. He has he has been dinged up a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, they gave him a lot of money. They gave him way more than what we offered him. We offered him nine and a half mil a year to team up with uh, Allen Robinson. So we were going to give him the nine and a half. And we was going to go big on Allen Robinson and have those that tandem. Because we didn't think that he was the caliber player to garner thirteen, fourteen and a half million a year, mm. you know, and that's what they gave him. So I think that's a lot of money. 
You yeah, know, he's he's a he's he, he's a he's a very very good wide receiver. He's a high point guy. Go up, catch the ball. He's not a burner. He's not gonna leave anyone. He's all. I'm not gonna say he's a possession receiver. He's he's faster than that. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know if he's a guy that's gonna command where you go out and you have to deploy your defense to to stop Galladay. Like I, I watched him a lot, and I, I just don't know if he's that guy. Yeah, you know, that he's number one. Yeah, right. So uh, with that being said, I, I he he's definitely gonna boost up the core. You know, better than what you know anything that they have. Even though they they had some decent receivers, but he's better than anything that they had. Mm-hmm. So they're better, but I think they overpaid. All right. Mm. To me, the screams of remember when Keon used to talk about the Hawks and how they would just pay guys like number one players and mm-hmm. expect that they mm-hmm. would be number one players just because you paid them like one. This is what right. the screams to me is Kenny Galladay is a good player. He's a nice guy, but he's not a number one receiver in this league. And you're paying him like one in hopes that he lives up to the contract. Yeah. Right. So, um, I don't know. It's going to be – my thing is if you can't – if you didn't – and I'm not going to say he didn't flourish and he didn't shine, mm-hmm. but if you can't dominate with Matthew Stafford, you're damn sure not going to dominate with Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Hello. All right. Um, Al, you're Dallas Cowboys. Yes. Um, I think the biggest deal, of course, is bringing back Dak. To a four-year, one hundred sixty million dollars contract, um, percentage-wise, the highest-paid player in the history of the league. Um, good move, man. Or Dookie Juice. Well, first, let me say I totally agree with what y'all said in terms of Galladay wide receiver. Mm-hmm. And at at no point since they've signed him have I had any fear in my heart with that signing. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I also would lump on top of it their signing of um a dory jackson right. and yeah. both of those players for you know like y'all i think they're good players good guys mm-hmm. it's really about the the value of the contract and what are you you're paying them to be and are they going to be those guys and i just yeah i think they'll be solid players but i don't think they'll kind of live up to the contract and in new york that's hard to, to hard to live that life right. um now that could move mm-hmm. and um he is our franchise quarterback and even though he's coming off of horrendous uh leg injury all reports are that he's um going to come back healthy he's performed he's on and off the field and it's particularly off the field and just how he has carried himself handled himself I think he's exactly what you want as a leader of your um, your organization, and those guys cost that amount of money. And mm-hmm. so, while he's um, no way shown that he is um, in the elite class yet, like he hasn't put himself in there, and so I think that criticism is valid. Um, but I don't think that's the point when it comes to these contracts. I think it's really about if you identify a guy as the guy, this is how much they cost. And so I'm like glad that is behind us. And it's the price of here. doing business. That's the price of doing business. And especially when you're the Dallas Cowboys. All right. And so I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for us. And I'm just hoping the brother has good health. That's really all I'm hoping for him. And I think everything else will take care of itself. Cool. All right. Hey, I, I just oh, but shout say, out! Hold on, shout out to another pick, another uh, pickup for the Cowboys, Keanu Neal. Ah, that was going to um, be my other for, one. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. safety to come in five million dollars, I think. Um, and Keon has mentioned him a lot, you know, in past. This is our third Keon mentioning in right. our episode. So <laughs> shout out to Key. But um, he's definitely was one of their best young players when healthy, the, the Falcons. So I'm glad he's on our team now and hope he stays healthy as well. Right. That and it looks good. like they may be yeah. moving him to linebacker. I would hold off on that. But, yeah. I mean, just because I don't know. You know Why yeah. would they do that? I mean, he's always played, like, in the box in the big safety role. But he probably – I mean, 
he's got most teams play in their sub packages more than usual now. So right. um, I just know they got him listed as a linebacker on NFL. dot com. So I don't know. I'm, mm. I'm looking yeah, at. I mean, I've heard that talk, yeah. um, but you know, the question is, you you're already paying heavy at these other two linebackers that you mm-hmm. want on the. And when you do play sub, you know, five five cornerbacks, one of them got to come off the field. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I I would keep him at safety and allow my uh, two linebackers be uh, Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith. Yeah. Right. And and then they have that other young kid that came in when Van Der Esch went down. He's solid. He can run mm-hmm. like that. That really made doesn't. I think his last name is Smith too, right? Something like that. But I I really in Keanu. I, like okay, so I play, you know I play fantasy football, so I watch mm-hmm. IDP. When 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 uh, Keanu, Keanu came back, he was a monster. He averaged yeah, like was. eleven tackles a game. Yep. I, I can't believe I can't believe y'all got him for five million dollars. That's and what I he, said, bro. He finished the season so strong. I can't believe I can't believe again. Here I go about the Bears. I can't believe that we <laughs> did. Well, because we paying we paying the guy we paying the other Gibson more than that. And and he's three times the player Gibson is. Well, like, I, he, he I, is, I, but I, if you listen to the show, I'm heard. I know you've heard me say, your best ability is your mm-hmm. availability. Yes. And uh, you just and we just we just rambled on ten minutes about our fear of signing Bud Dupree for all that money, coming right. off of one injury. Right. Keanu Neal ain't played a full season his entire four year career. I agree with that. So I, 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 it's easy to spend that money when it ain't your checkbook, Pooh. Five million dollars? No, I'm saying I mean, also, when you want to spend more than that is what I'm saying. When you want to go throw the checkbook at somebody, it's easy to say five million dollars is chump change when it ain't your money. Two years, ten million. We would have him two years with, with with that kid with uh. With, that's with what Eddie. I'm saying. It ain't your money. Yeah. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that. Gibson. <laughs> Gibson ain't make at least at least hey. when that kid in you respecting that kid. Gibson but, just but, another Gibson just another safety. While while but I like the fact him. that you going off on the Bears, I swear I do, and I I, I don't want to stand up for him, but I, in this case I just want to give a little bit of backstory that uh, uh, Neil's former head coach Mike Quinn, he's our defensive coordinator now. Right. Yeah. So the reality is it probably was either him going back to the Falcons. Or him coming to the Cowboys in mm. terms of who really has shots to 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 get him on their team. Right. Hey, yeah. money talk. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried. Right. I tried. Oh you, man. You know what runs the marathon? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's. I'm just. I'm just saying, like, there's a reason why there was one team that signed him to a, to a five million dollar a year contract. And thirty-one teams didn't sign him at all. You get no. what I'm saying? Like, I don't, yeah. I don't think there was anybody beating his door down to pay him twenty million dollars next year. No, I didn't. I didn't hear. I didn't hear anyone even mention. You know, right, that's what I'm anything. saying. And so the the player that he is, and we know he is. I think the fact that he's injured all the time is the reason. Like, there's right. There's got to be a reason for that, and I think that's the reason. And like, he's a hell of a player when he's healthy. But that when he's healthy is a huge all caps in bold underline in italic statement. <laughs> he got that. He got five mil, and Will Fuller is the same thing. Said he got ten. Well, then you looking at value. Like we're getting deep into stuff. Then you looking at value position. Why receivers get paid more than safeties do? Well, yeah, they you do. Know, so it's it's not apples to apples. But either way, right. I like the Keanu Neal signing. It could be pick a payoff huge. No, it could pay off huge. I agree. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Pooh, the Philadelphia Eagles hadn't made a ton of signings. Uh, they did make an interesting one. Um, safety Anthony Harris, speaking of safeties, um, who, uh, who were really good, uh, former Minnesota Vikings, signed a one-year deal for $5 million. Um, mm. <laughs> what, what do you think? Good move, meh, or dookie juice? Uh, I'm gonna say yeah because they just need so much help. Right? <laughs> you know he he's not gonna. I, I don't know if he'll be a difference. That's the only reason why I say yeah because I mean they did not, not much five million bucks, but dude they're they're atrocious. You know in the secondary. Yeah. So, and they just um, then they then they let go of Malcolm. Malcolm. Uh, uh, 
I don't know. Mm-hmm. Jenkins? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. But either way, they know. need help back there. Yeah, yeah. They, they're, but, you know, <laughs> I, I hope, from what I'm hearing, I hope they bring back Nick Foles. Well, then, no, they, well they brought back Joe, they, they brought in Joe Flacco today. Oh, they signed Joe? They signed Joe Flacco today, yeah. Joe Flacco was on the street? Yeah, Joe was, uh, you know, Joe's with the Broncos. Jet. Broncos in the, yeah, in the Jet last year, that's right. He was Broncos, then the Jets. But they brought they brought in Joe Flacco today on a one year deal, um, to kind of be a, a veteran presence in that their quarterback room. Right, man. I would rather I would rather us bring in Joe for you half a million Joe. dollars than Andy. You, know you don't want Joe. You hear what I said for yeah, half, half a million? million. <laughs> Forty dollars signing bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Andy's done, man. Andy's uh, done. We're getting to that. Hold on. Hold yeah. your horses, Denise. Yeah. Um, um, but Al, your, your, your Washington football team. Mm. Oh. A, half, a half a million dollars. A half a million. <laughs> 500,000. <laughs> um, they got some big signings. Um, <laughs> they brought in Ryan Fitzpatrick, uh, Lamar Miller, uh, those guys who have probably in the twilight of their career. As far as NFL mm-hmm. goes, um, their biggest signing. Um, they also brought in wide receiver Curtis Samuel from the from the Panthers. Good signing. Yeah. Um, oh wow. They, um, they brought in cornerback William Jackson the third from the Bengals. Um, three years, forty million dollars, twenty six mil guaranteed. Like, I don't know. I just let you speak on it. Um, good move, man, or Dookie Juice. I, besides Curtis. I mean, I, I think Curtis is a good move, mm-hmm. I, especially to go with the the weapons that they're assembling. You know, I, I think he's going to fit in well and be a problem in our division. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, Dookie Juice. Mm. And mm. Um, Fitz. Magic? Yeah, Dookie okay. Juice. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not worried about that at all. And even if he has some good games, not to say that he's going to be but, but – with the team that they have, I think they have a team with a uh, with a prolific quarterback could like be the team to beat in a division. Mm. Um, with Fitzpatrick, mm, y'all, y'all got a shot to win the division. But I just think they have an amazing defensive line, um, good secondary. I like the wide receivers, especially with Curtis. Um, so I, I like what they're building. I just think, and I think the quarterback would have been the missing piece. Yeah, um, and I'm thinking they're hoping one of those the top five guys in the draft fall to them. Mm. So Fitzpatrick again can be the the bridge guy for a young quarterback because um, there's no way they're you're banking your future on Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I'm thinking they're hoping, you know, maybe Mac was it Mac Jones falls to them. Yeah. Um, which wouldn't be a bad look, you know. So, um if it pans out that way. What what uh, slot do they have? Twenty second, twenty third, something like that. Yeah, he Mac. ain't falling that far. Mac, he ain't falling. <laughs> Mac look, Mac won't get past us. Yeah. And where really, y'all at? We at twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And I don't so, think he'll get to y'all. Like we, me, like we in the spot for the last quarterback to be taken mm-hmm. in, in the first round. I don't think a quarterback get past us. Like, right, I don't know, think so either. Whoever's left, whoever's so, left. Um, so maybe they just, you know, want to go with a, a veteran for this one year and then, you know, take chances next year and see where they stand in the draft and get a young guy. I like Ron. And, and I, I like guess this year. Um, I – I, I, with that with that draft slot, I can understand not being confident that you're going to get somebody and in the draft. And maybe they are also hoping that they can pull a trade for the for Sam Donald with the Jets. Because mm-hmm. um, I think that would be I think that would be a great move for for him right. and them. I can um, see that. So if that's what they if that's what they building, then Ryan's a great good move. Yeah, that'll be a problem there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I still don't see. I mean, unless they offer the Jets something they can't refuse, 
I just think the Jets. I think they're gonna move with with, with Darnold. Um, mm. You know, especially the way they're talking him up. You know, so yeah. You don't, you don't think they're gonna go Zach or uh, the other kid from uh, Ohio State? I don't simply because they're loading up at receiver. Like they're loading up at places to help Darnold. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, instead of other spots. So when you see teams start, you know, you sign two receivers in free agency, sign an offensive lineman, like I think you're, you're kind of saying we need to put something around him instead of getting rid of him. Okay. Although, you know, this is the Jets. And, I, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I'm not saying it as in, in, in the sense of they don't run things well, because that's a whole nother conversation. Mm. What I mean by this is, the Jets is that they have a lot of holes. Right. So even if, you know, when you see they're plugging in these people in other uh, rosters, then you might be right because these are the guys, but they still need a wide receiver, even though they signed Corey Davis. Yeah, that's true. They still need a lineman, even though they got called. Yeah. You know what I mean? They still could use a guard yeah. or a, and a center. So, I mean, it's like they're plugging people in, but it, it's still up in the air, I think, to read those moves in terms of what they do with Sam. But I still, to your point about them talking him up, though, I think that's probably – that could be a trade value thing. Yeah, yeah, but I still be. think signs are saying they like Sam, though, that they're going to stick mm-hmm. with him. Yeah. Yeah, at All the end of the day, stuff. I think they do. Mm-hmm. So, All right, Pooh, on to the NFC North, your Chicago Bears. Uh, the big signing in Chicago – uh, has been linebacker Jeremiah Taji. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> quarterback Andy Dalton uh, brought in for one year, $10 million, with a max value of $13 million in incentives. Andy breaking the bank in Chicago. Um, what do you think? Well, why do you think this move is Dookie Juice? <laughs> I ain't even going to ask you why. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> I'm the- Sounds a bum, man. He's done. It's the red, the red rifle is not a red cap gun. He's... And, <laughs> and he said they've already told him that he's uh, that classic. he's uh, he's a starter. That's what he said. QB yeah. one. That's what they told me. Right. Um. That's what he said. Andy, Andy's done, man. I would just, I would just rather us uh, just. I mean. Dude, at this point, if, if, if this is what we're doing, let's see what we can get for Khalil Mack. Mm. See what we can get for Eddie. Don't say and that, just man. load And just load up, man, because we're wasting so, those guys. It's a, long way, it's a long way back from that pool. Man, Jay, I mean, you go, you go the there, kid, it's a long way back. By the by the time by the time that kid, by the look, we we done this year, dude. We're playing for the first pick with Andy Dalton. We're playing for the first pick. So I'm just saying, I, I I I don't know, man. Just Andy was Duke. Andy's Dookie juice. And, and, okay, and, so let's 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 let me let me put this just the scenario. So because we are we are, I'm assuming that if they had signed, if they brought back Mitchell Trubisky on a three year deal, Dookie juice. This, right, this would be worse than signing Andy Dalton to a one year deal, right? Yes. Okay, so. You got Andy Dalton on a one-year deal. So let's say you say you plan for the first pick next year. You right. suck it up this year. Um, let's say you get the first. Let's say you get – y'all ain't going to be that bad, I don't think, because your defense is too good to get the first pick. Mm-hmm. I'll say you get the fourth pick next year. Um, it is supposedly a, a weaker quarterback class next year, but they say that every year when there are a lot of big names already. There will right. be some guys that step up. Let's mm-hmm. say you get your franchise quarterback next year. Would that be worth it to you? Man, well, I have my franchise quarterback, but uh, Mac will be so old in the tooth that, it's, that they're falling out. Uh, Eddie, Eddie have probably about two, three more good years. We already let our corner go. We have a young corner, but we I just think we're going to be missing a lot of pieces. Right now we're down to one backer. You know, we let, we let Nick go in free agency last year to the Raiders. So we have the the young kid uh, Roquan, and then then the other kid we have. He's old, you know. He played good ball this year, but he, you know he he's long in the tooth. Uh, but the kid from the Broncos. And and uh, and also, I'm sorry. Also, it's been confirmed that y'all have offered the Seattle Seahawks three first round picks, 
a third round pick, and two starters for Russell Wilson. So it's not like they're not trying. Like mm-hmm. they they're trying, but like they had to get Andy because they need somebody. I mean, we need somebody. Jay, they're trying, but they should they should be they should be fired. They should be tar tarred and feathered. Like just to squander that even. Not alone that they drafted. Here I go. Not alone that they drafted Mitchell Trubisky, but we gave away a freaking first round pick for the next year. We gave away a first round pick to draft Mitchell Trubisky. I get do you it. guys understand that? Do you guys understand that? I do. But what you know what a lot of teams do, Pooh? Like like Jacksonville did a few years ago, is they say, "Oh man, he played better this year. Let's re-sign him to a contract extension, and hopefully he keeps getting better." They don't admit their mistake. And so Jacksonville did that with Blake Bortles. And so if Chicago did, did. that with Trubisky, then you're in a, you're in a heap of trouble. Then you fire dudes because you, then you let that – because all GMs are going to make mistakes. Now, especially a quarterback. Now, granted, that's a huge mistake to make. If they fired him because of that one thing, I ain't, I ain't going to say I disagree with you. But the fact that but they're they, still there, they got to have a quarter. You got to have a quarterback. They, they, they got to have a quarterback, but okay, okay, by drafting Mitchell, I don't get it, but I get, okay, you make a mistake, but you give away next year's first round to draft Mitchell Trubisky, that's, that's ridiculous. That's the cost of doing business, man. That, But that's what I'm saying. They should be fired for that crap. <laughs> you, you, you miss next year's first round pick to draft Mitchell Trubisky yeah. and he's a freaking bum? I don't know, man. I, I ain't I ain't gonna be in this Dookie juice. I ain't gonna be in this Dookie. position until next year when I ain't got a quarterback no more. So we'll we'll do it all day. Cause, I'm uh, say, <laughs> Andy Dalton, man. I'm gonna say Andy Dalton Dalton Dookie juice. I just I just don't wanna waste those guys, man. Let's just load up with picks and everything and, and Well Al, you saw like you that. saw you saw Andy Dalton this year. What do you think? I thought he was um he was the second best quarterback that played for the Cowboys last year. Mm. And um, it was definitely a noticeable difference when we had a rookie in there, Danucci, somebody. Like, mm. Danucci was his last name. Oh, he was and then we had, a, we had another guy in there, Gilbert, who was better than Danucci. Mm-hmm. But Dalton was, was definitely better than them. And um, I. He better be. But hold on, let me finish. Let me just finish my statement. I just a couple more sentences. While I understand Pooh's frustration from a quarterback spot, I think he's going to be surprised at if he is the guy who plays all sixteen games. I think he's going to be surprised at the pro- productivity that he gets from Dalton. Mm. Just let it play out, Pooh. I'm trying to keep your keep hope alive, man. Keep your blood pressure down. Too. You right. know what's yeah. worse? You know what's the worst thing? The worst thing is going into next year without any hope. That's the worst part of being. <laughs> that's why I'm trying to keep open. That does. So. Yeah. That's that's the worst part of being a fan, man. Going into next year without any hope. That that that's so, and that's what it feels like being a Bears fan, man. It's it sucks. It sucks. Wow. Well, things could be worse. Cause you could be a Lions fan. L, the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Um, their biggest move this offseason. Um, they brought in defensive tackle Michael Brockers from the L.A. Rams, who they've they've kind of become acquainted with the Rams this offseason. Um, we already know and talked about the Jared Goff and Matt Stafford trades. So we won't talk about that. But um, Michael Brockers, defensive tackle. Um, and it's kind of weird. They traded a seventh-round pick for Brockers, which is nothing. Um, and then essentially just sign him as a free agent. They sign him to a three-year extension for 24 mil. Um, considering the player that Brockers is, to get him for a seventh-round pick and sign him to a modest deal, um, good deal, meh, or Dookie Juice? I think that's a good deal. I mean, it doesn't solve all of their problems, of course. But I definitely think he is a solid piece um, on on their defense. And they, they need pieces. So, right. Uh, they didn't break the bank. They didn't give up a lot of draft capital. So mm-hmm. I think it's a good move. Okay. Um, Pooh, the Green Bay Packers. 
Um, and not they haven't signed anyone's outside free agent, so their biggest move is bringing back running back Aaron Jones on a four-year, $48 million deal, um, $20 million over the first two years, guaranteed. Um, good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? That was a great move, man. Uh, first off, I want to say the hell with the Packers, but uh, that was a great move. <laughs> um, for the bringing, bringing those guy, bringing that, bring that guy back. He's an absolute stud. I really think, you know, I really think other people was throwing more money at him, but you know, he figured he like, you know, likes what they have there in Green Bay. But uh, it was a great move, I think. I think Miami was throwing the bank at them. That's probably why they let Van Noy go to, you know, clear up more money. But um, he, he he's a great back. He's a great back. Yeah, I like Jones. All right. Um, and lastly, in the NFC North, the Minnesota Vikings. Um, not a lot of big deals here. I guess their biggest deal would be uh, it would undoubtedly the biggest deal. Uh, bringing in cornerback Patrick Peterson, one of the all-time greats, but uh, getting a little long in the tooth, to a one-year, $10 million contract. Um, after talk today, we're going to move him to safety. They verified that they are going to keep him at corner. Uh, Al, for the Vikings, uh, good move, man, or Dookie Juice? If he was being moved to safety, I would say good move. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think he's getting long in the tooth, and I guess I was hoping, like other cornerbacks, he might try another position. Um, but you know, I, I'm a go. I, I'm a big Peterson fan, so I, I can't say Doogie Juice. So just because I, I yeah, always like him as a player. I was about to dare I'm, you to say Doogie Juice makes a Patrick Peterson. I'm a go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Cool. Yeah, man. Um, and I think. It's kind of been unfair to Peterson because while he's not the player he used to be, they've been playing him and putting him in situations like he is in Arizona. Mm-hmm. So instead of adjusting to his you know, decline, they just keep playing him like he's 25. So hopefully the Vikings and whoever he plays with in the future will realize that he's not a, he's not a lockdown corner anymore, but he's still one, yeah. of, the, you know, one of the top 32 safeties in the, I mean, um, corners in the league. So you give him some help like you do a regular cornerback. Put, put some help over the top. Don't lock him up man-to-man or follow the best team's, the team's best receiver. Stop treating him like he's Patrick Peterson. You'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, they didn't pay him all, you know, one year, $10 million. Yeah. It's not, exactly. not crazy. Yeah. So um, on to the NFC South. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, we talked about them because we keep mentioning Keon. Um, they had made a lot of big moves. Uh, I guess their biggest move is – Got to give some some uh, I guess some kind of solidification to the backfield in the offense. Uh, they brought in running back Michael Mike Davis, um, played for the Panthers last year, and definitely kept them afloat while Christian McCaffrey was out. Um, but Mike Davis, um, former Gamecock, shout out, um, signed to a two year five point five million dollar deal. Uh, Pooh, good move, man, or Dookie Juice. Mike, he might play hard, man. He's a, I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna definitely, a, you know, one two. But Mike, he's a, he's a good player. He's a, I, I definitely won't say uh because if you need him, he's gonna get out there and play ball, mm-hmm. run hard, catch the ball, block. Mike, Mike's a very good player. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, the aforementioned Carolina Panthers, Al, um, brought in linebacker, edge rusher. Hassan Reddick from the Arizona Cardinals. Um, he signed with the Panthers on a one-year, $8 million deal. Um, at that kind of money, man, good move, meh, or Dookie Juice? That's a great move. I, I like I like Hassan a lot. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to um, fit in well with the Panthers uh, in terms of the defense that they play. And um, not a, a crazy contract, but I, I, I look at what they're um, adding to their defense, and I think it's going to be a good move at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, Son Reddick came on heavy after they 
had some injuries at outside edge rusher and moved mm-hmm. him from off ball linebacker to edge and he exploded. So great mm-hmm. deal. Um, the New Orleans Saints, Pooh, uh, brought brought back Jameis Winston on a one year five point five million dollar deal. Um, could be as much as twelve point five million uh, with incentives. Um, good move, yeah, or Dookie Juice. Good move for the Saints. Good move for the Saints. Dookie Juice for for Jameis for doing it. You know, Jameis to the left, but. Good move for the Saints. They let me guess. guess you should have signed with the Bears. Nah, I mean, <laughs> but there there were teams out there that was looking at him. You know, they were looking at him to start, and, and we were one of them. But I mean, because he's a he's a five thousand yard passer. Mm-hmm. Round out loud. He, I mean, yeah, a lot, a lot of turnovers, but he's a five thousand yard passer. Like, and I still think they should have threw him out there, and 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 and. Because this day was going to come with Drew, but I guess they see what they have in Taysom Hill, and they know they're not going to be able to score, and it's going to be a nail grinded out type game, and they know what type of player Jameis Winston is. He's going to get it to all the wide receivers. He's going to, I mean, of course he's going to turn it over a few times, but he is going to, he's going to play, the, he's going to play the Saints offense type of offense. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, mean, I think it's a steal they got him for that for that for that paycheck. I think that's a steal. All mm. right. Yeah, and I mean you go with Taysom Hill, one, you know, by game four, teams are gonna figure out what you're doing. Um, you can't run a full offense with Taysom Hill, and then two, uh, Taysom Hill either gonna have you winning by ten or losing by thirty. So, go with Winston guy who can. Actually, run a full offense at quarterback. So I'm right. Trying. Uh, Al, the Tampa Bay, the world champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, I'll just go collectively. They just brought back the band. The band is sta- keep it staying together. Chris Godwin, yeah. Rod Gronkowski, um, Levante David, Kevin Mentor, um, Nunez Rochas on the defensive line, Shaq Barrett. Um, they brought back everybody. Uh, even Ryan Suckup, former game cop, the kicker. Um, good move considering some of these guys are getting older or do you keep pushing with it? Good move meh, or Dookie Juice? I, I think good move. You got to take a run while you got Tom. Mm-hmm. So keep it stocked and run run it back. And mm-hmm. I, I would like to even make it better if they got Fournette to come back. Because yeah. I think he definitely um, made it a powerful offense tandem. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, yeah, good move. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I just want to dive in on that. I don't know if Fournette is going to come back. I just think that because he missed out on a lot of money, mm-hmm. you know. So he had now he has his, he has his ship. So I think he can go to because they show a few quality teams that's that's you know willing to pay pay him not pay him a huge deal but you yeah, know one, more than what one being the, the Patriots can of course. Yeah, yeah he's he's quit, right. Yeah. Right. So, why not? Everybody else is there. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be difficult. And, you know, anytime you win a Super Bowl, some guys don't want to win two. They want to get paid. They want to get paid, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So, um, we'll see. Um, but Leonard, he won't get paid to get broke off from Tampa. Um, and, but, you know, as a running back especially, you want to get as much money as you can while you're young. Right, so you know it wouldn't shock me if he uh, if he chased the money after he get after getting the ring and being right. playing a big part in getting that ring. So, right, yeah. All right, uh, Al. Um, next up in the uh, NFC South. Uh, no, I'm sorry, moving on to the NFC West. I'm sorry. Uh, we have the Arizona Cardinals, and I give you two names, um, two guys who are probably past definitely past their prime. But they, they both say they got something left in the tank. We'll see. I'm sure they did when they signed that contract. <laughs> right. At least they got some ink left in that pen. Um, <laughs> wide receiver A.J. Green agreed to a one-year deal for $6 million. And defensive end J.J. Watt. Uh, it's a two-year, $31 million deal. Um, each of those guys, good move. Yeah. Or Dookie Juice. I 
think both of them is a good move. Mm-hmm. I think both of them are not coming to be the guy, mm-hmm. and but you are adding um, some real quality players, uh, injury prone, and kind of up there in age. But if it works out, and you know you're always hoping for the best when you do these contracts, I think you are trying to capitalize on. I think uh, a, a window of opportunity in the uh, NFC West with uh, Seattle and Russell and Flux and San Francisco and eh, the Rams. And eh. so I really mm. think if I'm the Cardinals, you got D hop, you got fuller, um, put AJ green in there. I think uh, Larry Fitz is still there. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, well, he's, you he's, are, he's deciding whether he's coming back. Okay. You know, and I can't remember. There's another wide receiver that's that's good on that team too that I can't think of right now. Christian um, Kirk. Him, Christian Kirk. Kirk. Yeah. Kirk. Um, so I think you know you are developing some weapons for that offense and for Kyle, for La, and um, so shout out, shout out to them. I think it's a good move. Yeah. Okay. Um. For the uh, next pool for the Los Angeles Rams. Um, they, they, I mean, they did bring in Deshaun Jackson on a one-year deal, but um, Leonard Floyd they brought back on a four-year, sixty-four million dollar deal um, after going there and pretty much exploding. Um, guy showed he can play. What do you think about the good move, yeah, or Dookie Juice? Oh, glad he got paid, man. What? A, yeah, I, 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 I might be a one-hit wonder, man. He balled out during the contract year. Um, I'm hoping he plays ball, but to me, I'm what well, my gut is telling me, eh? You know that that that's how I feel about it. But I, I do want to touch very very quickly on um. Oh wow, I lost my train of thought. Who who were we talking about before? <laughs> the Cardinals. The Cardinals. AJ the Green. Cardinals. Okay. JJY. AJ Green, man, I watch a lot of AJ Green Green snaps breaking down. He he looked good last year, as in you know in and out of his routes, um, attacking the ball, high pointing. For some reason, man, he and he and um and Joe Burrows. just kept it on the same page. I guess because he was out there entire camp or or what, but they just couldn't get on the same page. But he was he was getting separation. You know, so I, I think I think he's going to be a huge addition to, to to the cars this year. It's going to be hard. Teams weren't able to do a lot with DeAndre Hopkins last year, and this year I think they're going to be able to do a whole lot less, <laughs> less against him. Because not saying AJ Green is is AJ Green, but he you know he 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 might be a Green, you know, but 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 not AJ Green. But he he's definitely going to be a pretty good ball player. And I think with Watt going on the line, just going back thinking, I think he's probably going to be their best all around, like lineman, as in um, rushing the passer and, and stopping the run. So I, and, and I watched him a lot last year. He still has a lot left in the tank as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Al, San Francisco 49ers. Um, they brought back Trent Williams to a six-year mm-hmm. – Hundred thirty eight million dollar deal, making him the highest paid offensive tackle in the history of the league. Mm. Um at thirty two years old already. Do uh do you think this is a good move? Yeah, or Dookie Juice? Green Dookie Juice. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like real talk. I was just like, What? <laughs> um you know, when you he, you know, first he had a good year last year, better than I think people expected. But at that age, that amount of money with some injury history, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, good luck with that one. And um, and with this, not even, I'm not even sure what their plan is because some people are talking about they getting rid of the quarterback. You know, so it's like mm-hmm. if if you're not even sold on who your quarterback is, do you really want to invest that type of money in 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 this player? Um, right. So yeah, 
Then they mm-hmm. then they rate him like the number two, number three tackle in the game last year. Jay, the little yeah, he had a great. I mean, he's a potential, probably a whole future Hall of Famer. Yeah, he. Um, he but thirty three years old, man. That's old, man. They, I'm thinking they're only looking to get thirty yeah. about three years. Well, yeah, about but years. but tackles, offensive tackles, especially modern tackles, can play into their late thirties. We see it a lot. Right. Um, not saying that he'll be the third best player in the you know, right. league. And, <laughs> so the chances that he sees the end of his contract are very slim. Um, right. But I agree with that. Like any, I mean, if you got a guy who, you know on your roster who's an elite left tackle in one of the premier positions in the league, sometimes you got to pay to keep him. But um, yeah, this is a lot, man. Especially a guy yeah. who's shown that if he's unhappy. He oh, kind of becomes yeah. like a menace in the locker room. Yeah, he'll he'll, he'll sit, but he essentially like had two years off though, right? So he had mm-hmm. two years of wear and tear off his body, right? I mean, yeah, yeah yes, but you're still aging. <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I ain't right. never played football, nigga. I still feel forty two. <laughs> right. Like, like, I, 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 I took fifteen <laughs> years off. <laughs> right. The clock, the <laughs> clock don't stop. I, right. The I took my. Stop. I've been out since my rookie year. The clock <laughs> don't stop. <laughs> right. I mean, fifty five guarantee. That's a lot of yeah. money. And um, when you then he hasn't played a full season in like seven years. Mm-hmm. That's all they looking to pay him though. They they only gonna get they only looking to get three years out of him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean and by that point, he'll either be paying so good that he'll wanna restructure the deal anyway, mm. or he'll be aging so fast that they'll wanna restructure it their way. Either way that deal ain't gonna get past three years. Nah, it's not. Um lastly, Seattle Seahawks. Um Let's see, Pooh. Um, they didn't really. They didn't make a big deal as far as signing anybody's players. They did make a trade for uh, Gabe Jackson, uh, Pro Bowl guard from the Raiders. Um, but I'll, I'll I'll go with this one. Um, they brought back Chris Carson, running back, uh, on a okay. one year, fourteen million. I'm sorry, a two year, fourteen and a half million 14. dollar deal. Yeah. Did uh, is that a good move to you? Yeah, or Dookie Juice. Carson stud, man. Yeah. Uh, he's a stud. All they got to do is give it to him. <laughs> you know, uh, they do a lot of that fancy smancy stuff. And, and, and some games you look, he got eight carries, you know. But, man, they give it to him. He He's going to he's gonna be up with around five, you know, 4.8 yards a carry. He's a he's hard to bring down, man. He He's a stud because Carson's well, a stud. Well, I, I love Chris Carson. I love him since he was at Oklahoma State. But when they do give it to him, and they, or when they don't give it to him, like I don't care how much they give it to you, your average is your average. He averaged three point nine mm-hmm. yards a carry this year. This, this year? year? Mm-hmm. Dang, it didn't. Okay. Hmm. And the reason I, the reason I'm, I'm harping on these numbers is because so many Steelers fans are saying, "Go get Chris Carson." Oh mm-hmm. man. I, you already got Chris Carson. His name is James Conner. No, Jay. You think yes. so? Yeah, absolutely. I'm saying as far as results it, it, go, 3.9 yards a carry. Both of them. They might have had the worst line in the league. league. Mm, I'm, bottom, I'm, bottom, I'm, bottom, bottom eight? Bottom man. eight with lines in the league. And Right. And so so was Pittsburgh. This really? Year? I thought y'all had one yeah. of the best lines in the league. Wow. No, absolutely mm, not. A couple of years ago. Right. That's what you oh. realize <laughs> we, we just like we re, we got rid of everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. If, if Pouncey hadn't retired, he's probably gonna be cut. Wow. Villanueva's gone. Filer's gone. Like that's three fifths of our mm. line gone. Um mm. because we couldn't get one yards on fourth third and one and then fourth and a half half a yard. Like we couldn't do it. It was that bad. But James wow. Conner is like that's what I'm saying. James Conner, he put up the same numbers Chris Carson did, and and he's a guy who's never played a full season like Chris Carson. Yeah, so, Carson had, yeah. I don't get like you kind of swear me on Carson. You kind of <laughs> swear. So that, and this is why, I say, as much as I love Chris Carson, he's one of those guys 
who because he plays hard and he, you know, the way he plays and people like him, the team he's on, we give him the benefit of the doubt for things that we crush other dudes for. Right. And as much as I like him, like, is he a guy you can really depend on? Mm. Dad, you 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 swam me. You swam me. Uh, doing a great job. But if the Steelers are signed him, I would be like, hell yeah, we got Chris Carson. <laughs> <laughs> He's a beast. Right. <laughs> so right, he's that kind right. of dude. Which you just like, you know, I don't know what it is. Like some dudes we just like and give him a pass, and some we like, nah, because yeah, I'm so ready for James. Man, I'm hoping James kind of sign with somebody else so fast. Just because I'm sick of seeing him not being available and missing holes and can't make cutbacks. Like, same shit. Right. You know, so we'll see. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't say that to trash Chris Carson because I love him as a player. But right. um, hopefully that uh, that's $14 million well spent for the Seahawks. Right. So, oh, man. Um, that's all the teams, y'all. We went through every team. Okay. Um. Uh, um, so lastly, uh, in the NFL, as quick as we can, let's discuss this Deshaun Watson situation. We are now up to 14. So for those of you who've been living under a rock, <clears throat> no, and if, uh, if you listen to this show, I'm sure you're familiar with who Deshaun Watson is um, and what's going on with him. So the Houston Texans quarterback, um, former Clemson Tiger, Georgia boy, um, one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Um, you know, he's um, been demanding a trade from the Houston Texans uh, because they pretty much run that organization into the ground in the last two years, well, two, two, three years. And he wants out. Um, and then all of a sudden, um, one day last week, out of the blue, we get three um, court cases filed with uh, masseuses claiming that he sexually harassed them and sexually, um, um, you know, was, was was violating. Um, it was a predator uh, during, um, you know, sessions with them. Uh, so there's three the first day, then two more came out the next day. So now we're up to 14 with 24 total women. Um, and reading the, the 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 allegations in these court cases, man, if he did any of this stuff, he's a sick bastard and he needs to be locked up. I'll say that first. Um, wow. I do not like saying, well, I'll put it this way, then I'll let y'all talk. I learned my lesson a long time, about a decade ago, when a certain quarterback with the Pittsburgh Steelers, who I love, got caught up in some shit with a chick, and he got accused of rape twice. And I learned a big lesson then. That it don't matter how much you like a player, how how good they are, how likable they seem in commercials and TV, how quiet they may seem, how, how much of a stand-up guy they may seem in public the shit that they do behind closed doors and he didn't even get charged. He was, he got off because it, you know, the truth came out that although he was a dirt bag, he didn't do anything illegal, but he did. He was still a dirt bag. So I learned that it don't matter how much all of that stuff matters to you. <laughs> Essentially our quarterbacks are niggas too. <laughs> and <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, as much as I like Deshaun Watson, I can't bring myself to say, ain't no way he did none of this because I don't know that dude. So, it, but if he did, lock that nigga up and kick him out the league. That's all I'll say. Um, if he didn't, it'll come out. And these, this is when I say that when, you know, when, when women make false allegations like this, they need to be charged, and hopefully they will if this is not true. Uh, Because I hope it's not just reading some of it. So, uh, Pooh, you first. I know you are the biggest Deshaun Watson fan on this on this show. Uh, What are your thoughts so far? Um, it just man, and I really don't. I really don't know. I really don't know Deshaun personally. Never sat on his couch or anything like that. Um, (laughs) and I hate to sound like that guy. However. And I'm not going to say it's not possible, but I'm just going to say I, I don't believe it. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I, I just don't believe it with, you know, with, with, I read some of the things and, and it just seemed, <laughs> some of the things just seem really like movie like. It's over the top, yeah. It, 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 it seems movie ish and. Mm-hmm. Like, like that. Right. So, <laughs> so it's like, and then, so it came to a conversation he was, he had with his, his personal lawyer and, and the, uh, the the whoever the lawyer is that's spearheading the the cases the allegations mm-hmm. and they had a conversation and and i, I think it was, it was recorded or it's uh, deshaun had the uh spoke about it to his lawyer and so he the, the conversation he had with the other guy was with well, deshaun did this happen I, we're gonna prove this and we you know we got this and this is a civil case and won't you pay X amount of dollars? He said it was a well over a, like a, um, you know, millions of dollars, you know, a civil suit and told Deshaun, you go ahead and pay this and everything will go away. You know, so, and Deshaun was like, well, he, the, the, these are his words. And he was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not paying anything. I didn't do anything to these women. You know, I'm not paying anything. Go ahead, you know, uh, draw your civil suits. I'm not paying a dime because I didn't do anything. You know, so after that, he said, you know, months later, then it's the, the civil suits and things start to appear. Mm-hmm. So I, I just don't know. Because cause, cause Deshaun, did, and these are his exact words, he said, man, this is a money grab. Mm-hmm. This, this seems like a money grab to me. You don't have anything on me. So it, it just seems, it seems so, and I don't even know if it's like plants from the Texans and I mean, we've seen some crazy things happen, and, and I don't want to go to you know become a you know conspiracy theorist, but I I just don't I just don't I just don't believe it. And, and if I'm wrong, hey, I'm wrong, but it it just it, it just don't feel right. Right, and we've seen this form of modern day lynching before. Right. Um, right. You know, modern day when lynching it, when Perfect, it comes Jay. to you know comes to a, a, a young black man who's on top of his, on top of the world, who dares to buck the system. To that, to, you know, they'll find a way to keep you stay in your place, boy. Right, right. right. Um, so we've seen Go this happen football. before. Right. right. Um, so people ask, what do the Texans get out of this? What do they benefit from it? That's what they benefit from. They keep their quarterback for the next decade, and he shuts his mouth. And he shuts nobody else down. wants him. Um, and, and and if they don't, Jay, they don't pay him a dime because he's out of the league. Right. So uh, and he and he's not going to threaten to sit out for the rest for another year because he's on right. his way. He's going to be grateful for what he has. That's you know, right. How it Still be in the league. Right. right. So right. I get it. We've seen this before. Um, Al, what are, what are your thoughts? I think. Yeah, it's a uh, if. Um, if what happened happened, you know, I would expect legal charges to come forward in the, in the future, you know, and if, you know, if there are no legal charges, then, you know, I'm going to be looking real cross-eyed at you know what what happens after that um I've, you know none of us was there so we don't know what really happened i, I must admit i was I, I was shocked you know like it didn't appear to be consistent with who he has shown but i think you know your point about ben roethlisberger or any other mm-hmm. athlete who has had their issues out off the court off the field um, oftentimes it's inconsistent with who the, the public persona that they have. Right. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I was shocked. And, you know, I know there are a lot of people like me who were shocked. Um, but, you know, I think the, the, the point is now is to just, you know, let's let it play out. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I really do believe in the idea of innocent to proven guilty. Yeah, um, and, I know in these types of cases, that usually is not what happens. <laughs> right. And it is usually 
guilty until you prove your innocence. Right, especially in the the court of public perception. Exactly, exactly. Right. And um, you know, and I, I I think that's a problem with where we are in these types of cases is that all it takes is you know a few accusations and um then you know t- people tend to put you in that category and but so you know i think that's just unfortunate and i'm just saying generally speaking i i hope you know i hope it's not the case because you know i think he has shown to be a quality dude and do a lot of good things off the field mm-hmm. and it, it would um kill a lot of people's yeah. um, you know yeah. hope and and i'll say this um, again, texting with Keon earlier about this, uh, we kind of came to one one thing that we could agree on fully was that one thing for sure is he's stupid as hell for putting himself in this situation where agreed he was coming to his house, coming to agreed. my house, being alone agreed. in hotel rooms, agreed. setting things up between managers. And not having it in a public place, like, agree. Do you when like we've seen this happen? Like <laughs> as Skion put it, he shot a video a couple weeks ago, and he's uh, there was you know like he was at a at a at a, at a after party at a house playing cards. He's like, man, you saw them two chicks that was in the video. Both of them tried to tried to give me some after the video shoot. Imagine if I was 115 million dollars richer and 15 years younger. How many? Hello. Like how much that would happen? If I put myself alone in a room with a bunch, like randomly all the time, like that. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what he's been doing. And so, although they haven't named any names in these suits, they have dates and they have times, they have locations. So, I and his, even his lawyer didn't say that sexual activity never occurred. He no, said that no. it was never forced. On right. anybody, so he's acknowledging that something happened at certain right. points, right. and he's also acknowledging that hey, these dates that they're giving, they're not going to be hard to find. He knows that, you know, chances are these dates are correct, these locations right. are correct. So right. something happened. So he's stupid as hell for putting himself in that situation where we keep seeing this happen to young successful dudes who get, you know, whether it's falsely accused or whether things, you know, miscommunication, whatever it is, things are not clear and consent is not totally given. And then you end up here. Mm. I agree. I, 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 I totally agree. agree. He, 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 uh, he definitely, I, I definitely, because I definitely wouldn't say that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't going down. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm definitely not going to say anything like that. Right. But like you say, putting himself in the situation of being alone with them so he doesn't have another set of eyes covering him mm-hmm. you know that that's a crucial mistake he he trusted people that shouldn't be trusted and and uh, I, I hope it it's going to cost you know of course he, it's going to cost him some you know because like you said public perception it, now his fiance is definitely going to look at him side eye oh, yeah, absolutely. you know hopefully it doesn't you know, cost him the ultimate price as the, you know, his job and his freedom. But if I'm not mistaken, it's like 14 civil suits. Like no, no one's pressing charges that saying that, you know, rape or anything like that, uh, Al, they, they, all of them civil suits. And, and one, one young lady said that, yeah, he was pushing my head towards his, you know, genital at our area. And, and I, and I just blacked out because of fear and I just woke up and I was like, what? Yeah, and some of it, like, one chick said that what? he grabbed her by the vagina and pushed his face in her butt, and and then she told him to stop, and then she he put, she, she continued because she asked him to, he asked her to get the oil off of his stomach, and then he rubbed his penis on her hand, and next thing you know, she felt this liquid that she didn't know what it was. Like, it's just weird that, wording wow. in this thing, yeah. but <laughs> I don't know. Um it's I can't I don't know. I always say like it ain't no way that like twenty four women woke up and had decided to tell the same lie on you. So mm-hmm. something happened 
I, I don't the, the thing is like he he allowed it to happen whether it was forced or not whether it was consent or not he allowed it to happen in a one-on-one situation behind closed doors with no proof to get himself out of shit right it it's gonna cost him we just don't know how much right it's gonna cost him though, but we just don't know how much yeah so um, whatever happened, all the best to whoever is the true victim in this situation. Mm-hmm. That's all I can say at this point, because we don't know. We can speculate. No, nah, we don't And know. we can, you know, because we do, you know, we're a sports show. We do like the guy. He's a, you know, like I said, he's a, he's a young, successful brother that we want to see do well. So we don't want to see bad things happen to him. So, yes, naturally we do want to see him come out on the other end of this clean. Um so, but if, like I said, if he did any of this, he deserves whatever he gets. Of course. Of course. Um, of course. The same thing with, you know, how we were with Sharper. Mm. Oh, you know, God. Yeah. it was like we couldn't believe it, but he, he, he had this, he had this little cruddy side to him, though. But, yeah, he was I mean, creepy. yeah, he, he, he did. It was, but of course, we were like, wow, he did that. You know, uh, he get rid of him. Yeah, you know. So, but anytime I mean, somebody's like on that true. level, like because he was, he was, he was dirty, right? Um, but it's right. Re- like again, we don't know these people, so when somebody comes up dirty like that, it's going to be surprising, because all right. we know is these dudes is playing or either being announcers or commentators after their career is over with. Um, so we don't see that, and rarely do we see the dudes that you know that we like. Oh, I knew he was creepy. I knew he was already like we don't, you know, right? Like so. You know, um, we, we, again, like most things we talk about, we shall see. He should be getting out soon, and he got he got ten no, years, right? He got seventeen. Ooh. Yeah. So no, not yet. Ooh. Yeah. Whoa. So, um, yeah, the dude doing time. Yeah. Um, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna let's let's finish this thing out. We got to listen to question. Um, so I went back and I rewatched the the Bo Jackson thirty for thirty. Mm. Um, I've been rewatching a lot of the thirty for thirties lately, and so Bo Jackson is interesting to me because he's I think he may be the last athlete, like superstar athlete, that he's that there's not there's how should I put this? There's enough of a mystery and a mystique around him that they are still, we're still able to tell tall tales about Bo Jackson. Mm. Like we can't do that about Michael Jordan because we've seen too much film on him. We can't do that about LeBron, of course, because there's too much access. Um, So it's interesting, like telling my 11 year old son about Bo Jackson. And, you know, they start telling these tall, these fables about when he was young, dunking, you know, dunking when he was 11, (laughs) you know, stuff like that. And my son was like, whoa, really? And I was like, whoa, that's interesting because you never lived in an age where stories are able to be told and stretched like that. You got proof of everything in front of you, in your hand. So Bo Jackson, to me, is is one of the biggest, like the last enigma that we have in sports. Mm. Because we're able to still, like nobody could tell me I'm lying if I said, man, all that stuff you saw on Tech Mobile, we could run circles around players. Bo actually did that in the high school game. <laughs> like, or if somebody <laughs> told me, man, Bo, I saw Bo carry a dude forty yards down the left sideline into into the into the <laughs> tester. Like nobody could tell me I was lying. Mm. But he's still modern enough where we still have film on him to actually to see how great he was. That people could say, damn, he was that good. He might actually did that shit. They saying, right, <laughs> <laughs> right. right. So um, I'm, I'm having this conversation with this dude that I know from work named Charlie. And uh, Charlie asked me, damn, who do you think is the biggest enigma in sports? So that's where the question comes from. Okay. Mm. Um, so outside of Bo Jackson, so in that sense of the biggest enigma of guys who we've uh, we may never be able to have, like, these kind of conversations about another player. Al, who do you think the biggest enigma in sports history is? So, 
sports history, that's a long time. So it's mm-hmm. really hard. Um, but the guy who came to mind immediately was Bill Belichick. Mm, okay. Mm. And I, I say that just because you really, as while you know some things about him, so the man's not a total mystery, mm-hmm. but when you think about all that he's accomplished and how much he's been in the limelight, when you compare that to how much we really know about right. him and how he operates and his perspective and mindset, I, I think it's like amazing that we know so little. Mm-hmm. And because for the guy to win that much, other other coaches, other personalities could have been having commercials, wrote books, then, uh, you know, you look, look at a Pat Riley or something like that, you know, right. like, just, we know, like, damn near nothing, and he really approaches the public from that perspective of, I'm mm. really not trying to give you nothing. Right. So that's who came to my mind was Belichick. That's a good one. Yeah, like one of the things about Belichick that always surprised me, like little things you learn about him, is that he's in a, he's a sharp dresser. Like he wears, like mm-hmm. you mentioned Pat Riley, he dresses like Pat Riley. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but you so used to seeing the cut off hoodie that you just think he walks around in cut off hoodies all the time. Correct. And, and he's this curmudgeon who's just angry with hoodies on. <laughs> that I think demonstrates how much of an enigma he is, is that when you find little nuggets about the man, you're like, oh, Right, it's like it's, all you uh, learned was that he likes to dress. <laughs> right, a mil- oh, he's man, a millionaire really? who dresses nice. Right, <laughs> really does he? <laughs> right, like, add that to suits. the number seven. That's right. seven things I know about. Absolutely, damn, that's a good one. Yeah. All right, uh, Pooh, who uh, who's your biggest enigma in sports? Man, wow. Oh man, I probably would go. So I'm gonna go with someone that 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 never made it. Mm. Um, man, and, and two come to mind. I'm, I'm gonna just hurry up. I'm, I'm gonna just say one: the kid Benji. Can't remember mm. his last name. Uh, the kid that played for Simeon and yeah, you know everybody wear number twenty two for him. But uh, that yeah. kid, but the kid Dupree. The running back, Oklahoma mm-hmm. kid, that the six three kid, the yeah. four two six. What, what's his, what's his first name? Marcus Dupree. Yeah, Marcus Dupree. The best go 30, Mar- thirty episode ever. <laughs> right. right, right, right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Marcus Dupree, man. Okay. I'm gonna go with yeah, that's Dupree. another good one. Yeah. Um, f- funny. I I thought you was gonna go with one pool. I was pretty much pegged you for this one. But Ooh, Derek Rose is a huge enigma to me. I, I, you know, I was gonna go with Derek, but I just went, I just went another direction. Of course, you know, I, the first thing, you know, Derek. But yeah. I just went, but Derek did get the MVP, and uh, of course, Derek. But because I just went with a little, I went with someone that that, that didn't make it. Yeah. And yeah. the reason I said Derek Rose is because as much as like we know those things about him winning the MVP, you know, the knee injuries, but nobody really knows personal stuff about Derek Rose. Mm-hmm. No, like, and for him to be, you know, the probably the biggest star in the NBA at one point, what do we really know about him? I did, I did, I did, I did know, know. Okay, so this guy, I knew. Well, this guy, his mother's best friend is, um, D Rose's mom. Okay. Mm, okay. So you know, I just knew I I just knew small things about like yeah. I know his nickname is Pooh. Right. I don't know you mentioned that before. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And just just you know they talk you know about their kids and things like that. But like you say, you don't know anything about. Right. You don't know anything it's, about Derek. No. Right. And so stuff like that, like it kind of like to me as big of a star as he was, like Peyton Manning was a huge enigma to me. Like for a long time, I didn't know Peyton Manning was married with kids. Oh, wow. like, like stuff like that, like nah, I still stuff didn't that's know. not right. <laughs> um, you know, like he didn't really until like later in his career when he started, you know, branching out and doing media stuff. Um, but yeah, but um, you know, and then 
you know, the, the, the tall tales you hear about him, you know, doing certain things on the field and in, 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 in high school, um, you know, he was that great where well, you couldn't disprove it. Um, so, you know, it, it's those kind of players like, um, that we have a, a little bit of access to them, but not enough mm-hmm. where we could disprove somebody telling us flat out lies about them. So, um, but the Bill Belichick one, that's, that's, that's a great one. Yeah. I've always, and honestly, I, I've always had a lot of respect for that approach. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Um, right. I, I know from a media perspective, it can be frustrating and maybe even if you are a fan of his, but I, I really think, um, the the discipline that it demonstrates mm-hmm. is um I, I like it and it's just a it's an a, I think when you're a coach I think the 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 hardest thing to be is authentic right and yeah, that 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 to me has just been a great representation of this is my style this is how I do it. Other might do it differently, but this is what I require, how mm-hmm. I approach it, and you're not gonna move me from it. Right. And nobody, nobody's been able to do it. Yeah, and I guess another guy who's kind of in that same, kind of same personality, different mm-hmm. sport. He's a player, Tim Duncan. Yeah, yeah. another one. No, yeah. you don't really. I can tell you today if Tim Duncan got kids, if he married, where he lives currently. I don't know. I guess in San Nothing. Antonio. He coached for the Spurs <laughs> once a year. Like I don't know, um, I don't. I don't even know. I can tell you, um, but yeah. But again, kind of that same, just consistently, like not necessarily standoffish, but you're only gonna get so much of me. Correct. Right. So. And it's when you consider the amount of success that they've had. Like it's mm-hmm. one thing to be standoffish. And you just regular, right? And it's yeah. like, all right, you know, all right. So what? You know, you, you wouldn't did nobody want to hear from you anyway, <laughs> right, Tom? To have <laughs> right <laughs> to have all these opportunities to right. talk and to right. capitalize on this fame mm-hmm. and to choose the private approach, or you know, just no, nah, I don't. I, you don't need to know all of that. I'm just going to tell you what you need to know. That's true. All right. A lot and, uh, of respect. Yeah, well, damn good question, Charlie. Um, yeah, you know, I know you said you're gonna start listening, so I'll uh, I'll holler at you next time I talk to you and see what you think. But uh, you know, y'all keep hitting us up with these questions, man. We we love having these discussions, so uh, hit us up on social media, any platform at Go Defy Life, or you can email us at info at Go Defy Life dot com. Um, let's wrap this thing over some trivia, y'all. So yes. we talked about Ryan Fitzpatrick earlier. Uh, the guy who uh, notoriously has played for um, a lot of football teams in his, his career. Now he's finally playing for the football team. Um, so I have two lists in front of me. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick's list of teams that he's played for through his career. Huh. There's a total of nine. <laughs> yeah. And also, I didn't even know this. I just went and looked to see who. Which NBA players played for the most teams in his career? Um, the most notable names on the list, there were four players. The two most notable names on the list were Jim Jackson, former Ohio State star. Okay. And former number one overall pick, Joe Smith. Both played for 12 NBA teams. I did not know that. So, mm-hmm. um, I have a list of Ryan Fitzpatrick's teams in front of me. Uh, representing the NFL and a list of Joe Smith's teams in front of me um, where they played at least one game with these teams. Uh, you tell me which, which list you want. Tell me which team. And if you miss one, uh, same as always, your opponent gets a chance to get one right and win the game. Okay. Um, so, Pooh, last thing I remember since we was on three weeks ago, um, last thing I remember, <laughs> you let me go first last time so you get to go first um you want joe smith or ryan fitzpatrick wow let me let me get fitz magic ryan fitzpatrick um give me one of those teams that he's played for in his career miami dolphins 
Miami Dolphins is correct. Um, and um, the Washington football team does not count on this list. One, because we've already said it. And two, because he and, hasn't played again. Right. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Um, Al, which list you want? I'm going to go with – I'll take the other one, Joe Smith. All right. Um, I do remember him playing for the Warriors. Golden State Warriors. That is correct. Played three seasons for the Warriors. Okay. Um, actually started his career with them. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Pooh, where we going? Uh, New York Jets. Ryan Fitzpatrick with the New York Jets. Oh, yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick. 20, 2015, 2016. Correct. I thought once we pick them, we, we own them. That's nah, what I thought. Nah, you can, you can switch back and forth, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, okay. okay, okay. I got you, got you, got you. I'll stay with Joe Smith. He played with the um, uh, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota Timberwolves, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, he actually played more seasons than with them than anyone else. Four seasons with Minnesota. Uh, okay. Two years in two different stretches. All right, Pooh, on you. Let me go Fitz. Let me go Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills, 20, 2009 to 2012. His longest stretch with any team. Yeah. All right. Al, on you. Um, Joe Smith was a Laker, too. I'm going to go with the Lakers with Joe. Yes. Joe Smith played mm-hmm. 12 games for the Lakers. Yeah. Um, in his last year in the NBA, mm-hmm. 2010, 2011. Mm. All right. Um, and, and Joe Smith, you know, you see a journeyman like this and you think, but he was the number one overall pick. Um, yeah. And coming out of Maryland as a guy who people were com- like, there was actual conversations of who's the best big man in the ACC. Was it Joe Smith, Tim Duncan, or Rasheed Wallace? So Joe Smith was not a bum. Joe Smith was not at all. Not at all. No. Yeah. Not at all. No, he wasn't yeah. a bum. Yeah. Uh, Pooh, on you. Dude, I have laid an egg. Uh, did you say Joe? I'm going to say Joe. I'm going to go Joe Smith this time. Okay. Right? Because I can't even think of any more NFL teams, period. I'm going to go Joe Smith. And uh, I want to say the 76ers. Did you already say that? No. Joe Smith played two mm-hmm. years with the Philadelphia 76ers. Total okay. 84 games. All right. Mm-hmm. Good one. All right, Al. Um, I'm gonna go with. Hold on, who who do we have on Ryan's team so far? What who's been picked? Uh, we've got the Bills, the Jets, uh-huh. Uh-huh. the Dolphins, and of course, football team is off. Okay. Um, he also played with Tennessee, Tennessee Titans in 2013. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Tennessee. Pooh. Wow. You got me. I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, who do we who do we have with who who all we have with Joe? Uh, with Joe Smith. We have the Minnesota Timberwolves, Golden State Warriors, the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but I'm going to say. I'm going to say Joe and uh, I'm going to say did, did you didn't say I'm going to say Dallas Mavericks uh, Joe Smith did not play for the Dallas Mavericks wow yeah. I can see him in a Dallas uniform for some me reason me too yeah. I was like oh, there's hey. so many of them I guess hey, yeah. me too um, hey, me too me too me too yeah. All okay. right, Al for the win. Uh, Joe got, Smith or Ryan Fitzpatrick? I'm going to go Ryan, and I, I'm i pretty sure he played for the Bucks. Played for mm. the Bucks in 2017, 2018, yes. Absolutely. The Bucks? Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick? Yeah. We played, uh, we played them while he was there and beat the mess out of them. 
Well, I'm trying to think, who did he back? Who was he? He, he backed, backed somebody up the James. first year. It might have been. I think it might have been Jameis. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. 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 I, okay. I can yeah. see him right now on the side. Maybe his first year, he yeah, yeah, he, he backed him up and then took over. I think his second right. year, like because yeah, I played. Yeah. We played them in the 2018, and we was up. That kid threw, you know, Fitzpatrick, man. That kid threw like three picks. With a pick six in the first half, I think Bud got a his only interception against Fitzpatrick. Turned it for a pick six. We was up twenty eight nothing in the first half. Then Fitzpatrick come out being Ryan Fitzmagic. We end up yeah. winning like thirty one twenty eight. That's kind of do you, yeah. I, I remember. I remember. Yeah. Congrats, Al. Good game. Thank you, bro. Um. So the rest of Ryan Fitzpatrick's teams, he started in two thousand five with the St. Louis Rams. Um. Also played with the Cincinnati Bengals, Buffalo Bills, Tennessee Titans, Houston Texans, New York Jets, Tampa Bay Bucks, Miami Dolphins, and now with the football team. Uh, Joe Smith. Damn, I could see him in that Dallas uniform, but apparently not. Um, Played with the Minnesota Vikings, I mean the Minnesota Timberwolves, Golden State Warriors, the Milwaukee Bucks, Philadelphia 76ers, Detroit Pistons, Atlanta Hawks, Chicago Chicago Bulls for one season. I thought that bum. Yeah. Uh, um, two years with the but with the Cavaliers. Uh, one year each with OKC, the Lakers, Denver, and the Nets. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Well, only four games with the Nets, but yeah, yeah. Um, so shout out to uh, our well traveled friends, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Joe Smith. Um, Joe Smith was also on a on a show with uh, Aaron with uh, Alex Rodriguez trying to get it with A Rod trying to get his life back together, and A Rod was being his financial consultant because uh, Joe's broke. Oh, is wow. it? Yeah, living in Atlanta, um, so just living above his means, and you know, never stopped living like an NBA player, and uh, went broke, and now he's. Um, Training, training kids and high school players, um, getting his income back together and putting his life back together. So yeah, pretty interesting. Okay. okay. Yep. Well, yeah, man. So Al, you won. Uh, anything? Got a got a parting shot for me? I do have a parting shot, and um, you sometimes when I have a parting shot, it's a little more thought through. So imagine, uh, pardon me if I ramble a little bit, but. I definitely want to um, just shout out and just acknowledge that what has been going on in our country in regards to this anti-Asian um, blowback, violence, hate that has been kind of um, addressed recently by the media, I think is well overdue in terms of some of the challenges that that community has been facing for a while now. And I think um, a lot of it is kind of, a lot of it is connected to our president and his language. And a lot of it is just connected to, we have a bad history of white supremacy in our country. And they have uh, been victim of it. And it is becoming more, um, well known publicly and so I just want to acknowledge that from our network that we are uh, uh, people who are just anti-hate and just that's just not what we're about so you know I, I must speak on behalf of the show and the network and just to say that that's uh, we stand with those who are anti anti um, Asian behavior like that's not who we're about Right. and I think as we as we recently though it's just been a lot of violence that's been happening from the shoot the, the shooting down here and the, the spa mm-hmm. um the shooting in colorado i've been seeing videos of brawls down in miami for spring right. break yeah. um it's i don't know if it's covid being you know just pent up stuff mm-hmm. but i really was kind of i don't know maybe it was because of the social distancing i was kind of getting used to not once a week seeing uh, 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 police 
you know, attacking a black man or right. a, 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 a mass shooting. Like it, for the last year or so, you know, the violence had been somewhat low. And I, I think the last few months I've just been like, ah, I've been reminded how violent of a society we live in. And I, I just want to get back to the peace, man. I just was kind of appreciating that in my energy in my life and so what we've seen recently is I, I'm really not down for it at all so um, just, that's just not who we about well post pandemic they did say back to normal so hey wow and this is our normal this is our normal and um, you know we saw we saw our normal with the insurrection and how crazy right. our country can really get and it has really set the tone for this year yeah alright good one man um, I'm right there with you uh, Pooh, what you got for me? Man, nothing crazy. You know, I'm with it. I, I second that. You know, I second all of that. It's just, I mean, I, you, I mean, you never want to see anyone mowed down or, you know, shot to pieces or, or whatever. <laughs> just never, but it's just hard to, it's hard to get the gist of things. Um, open gunman, 21 years old, supermarket, gunned down nine people. Uh, cop respond, gun him down. And like I see them holding his hand, you know, taking him off. And and like once I heard that, okay, this guy killed a cop. So now I'm thinking there's no way that they're going to apprehend this guy. You know, I, I don't, I don't know, man. It, it's just, and, and, and we've been singing this narrative for a long, long time. Like you're afraid, you know, deathly of, 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 of black people with, 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 with writing pens. And, 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 you know, you are gunning them down, holding a sheet of paper. You know, and, and, and people with rifles and submachine guns, like the guys walk walk right out as a, a Sunday morning stroll. Mm. You know, and, 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 and like I said, you know, you, you don't want to see anyone gunned down, but it's just the two, just the two Americas. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, you just get tired of, you just get tired of living that story. It's like, a, it's just like Groundhog's Day. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just keep, mm-hmm. just keep reliving that crap over and over and over and over again. And you know what's funny is six blocks away from that supermarket um, was where um, a 23 year old special needs black man by the name of Elijah McClain was killed um, while telling the cops. Um, I, I don't live like that. I'm sorry if you think me like that. I'm just an introvert. I love you guys. I just want peace. They killed this kid, 23 years old, um, because they thought he was, they said there were complaints about somebody wearing a mask, and well, they pinned him down, killed him, six blocks away, um, just, just two years ago, um, wow. from the supermarket where they're able to apprehend a naked gunman killing right. cops. Killing cops. Bro, killing whoever. Right. That's, you know, so, it's mind boggling. Yeah, man. Um, so, which stuff like that, I mean, I, you know, I know people going to say, you know, it ain't, everything don't have to be about race. Everything is about race in this country. Um, it's only when, it's only when you don't want us to talk about race when you say that. Um, so if, if, if somebody can look a black kid in the eye while he's telling them I love you and kill him means to me mm-hmm. that police can kill a black any black person in this country and not give a shit about it. So yeah. I'm with you, Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. So um I guess that's my part in shot, because I ain't got nothing else. <laughs> so I'm with <laughs> you. Oh man. Damn good show guys. Good to be back. Um yeah, we, uh, back. yeah we went back to old times, went over two hours on this one, but damn good one. I see yeah. y'all showing out. All right, we yeah. showing out. Cut y'all out in the morning. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. oh 
up, man. Yo, thanks for listening, man. Um, this has been episode 190. We got to start planning for this 200th episode. Um, okay. Yeah, check us out. Uh, Check us episode 190. Check us out on defileipods.com or everywhere else your favorite podcasts are available. We'll talk to y'all next week. Until then, defy life. Defy life. Defy life. life. We're told that greatness is exceptional, what it should be expected. You choose every day to live your life intentionally, without apology for how bright your light may shine. So go be great. Go be brilliant. Go be you. Go defy life. The defy life movement is one that speaks to each of us in its own way. Defy life gear speaks to us all by reminding us that one size does not fit all. Visit defylifegear.com to get fitted for greatness.